<laughs> oh, this kid's got an iron fist. Oh, yeah. Today, we chat with Michael Wirth, the star of martial arts movies like Fists of Iron and To Be the Best. He is today an accomplished filmmaker with a lot of movies under his belt, ranging from action to drama or even comedy. We'll talk about success, failure, training, and even let the inner movie nerd come out in this casual conversation. This is Michael Wirth for the Bruce Willow Podcast. Testing uh, one, two, three. This is Michael, late Michael, talking <laughs> late to your, Michael. <laughs> your producer. This is Maverick. <laughs> Maverick, Maverick here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's amazing. I almost went and saw that yesterday. Huh. It was playing in the in the theater. Top the original Top Gun. Was oh, playing the original one. I was like, I'm, I'm afraid right now. I have in my possession the new Coming to America, and I'm afraid of watching it. And I'm also afraid of watching Top Gun, the new Top Gun, because I hate it when they try to do reruns of stuff, of old stuff or revivalisms. And then you go and watch it. It's like, oh, no, you ruined my childhood. This is exactly Does not it kind of hurt the original movie for you? Because is that what it does for you? Well, yeah, yeah a couple of them yeah, did. It. Like the new Terminator, it's like, mm, yeah. it's like dog crap, I would say, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes with the new Terminator, you almost felt like they kept kind of breaking it and they kept going back to try to fix it again and they broke it and they've tried to fix it. So you feel like it's gone back a number of times to try to fix it, but it's sort of like yeah. too late. <laughs> what, are, what are some of the movies that you've, that you've watched recently that have really been letdowns? Do you recall any? Letdowns? Oh, my God. <laughs> you mean like sequels? Do we have the whole, t the whole afternoon? <laughs> Maybe we have time, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've, been, I've actually been lucky to see mostly pretty good movies lately, you know. Um, you know, that's why I was so happy with Cobra Kai, the series. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah, you know, I've been enjoying that a lot, actually. It's, uh, you know, Mar Marty, Martin Cove is a good friend of mine, and I kind of like the fact that they're, they're, you know, they're doing it in their new direction for the new audience, but they're completely sticking with the... Um, with the original people, you know, they're bringing them all back in. They're staying with the, the legends, you know, they didn't fully star Wars it and go off in a different direction. Yeah. You can definitely feel the, the lack of presence of, you know, a, a father figure like, or a grandpa figure like Mr. Miyagi or something. But I love the way they put so much retro in it because I grew up in the, I actually didn't grow up in the eighties. I grew up in the nineties, but eighties is my thing for some reason. And uh, I, I, I really love the, the, the way they, they told the story the storytelling is really great but uh, you know after a while after a couple of seasons it's, it's like it's you know it's starting to turn into a little bit of a teen <laughs> soap opera you know after a while Cobra it's like Kai, okay this, the mm -hmm. target is the teen so i'm like mm, okay okay I, enough for me but uh, but still great idea and i really hope it it brings more people and more teenagers to do martial arts i, I believe we need those types of role models what do you think well, yeah, I mean, if we can open up the door to an interest in, especially traditional martial arts, you know, because now you have with the UFC, this whole MMA sort of hybrid now, which it's, it's really not a, I mean, it's a bunch of martial arts. It's kind of what Bruce Lee started in a way. And I, and I, I appreciate that element of it. But at the same time, people miss out on some of the more traditional, put your head and learn that jack of, you know, be, be the, I mean, you can be the jack of trades of all these things. And I'm a striker, you know, I'm a kicker. That's it. It's rather than, you know, I'm a, I'm a Taekwondo or a Tang Soo Do. It's a, so every time I watch the UFC and some guy comes up and it's like, and introducing, you know, so-and-so, a student of Kung Fu or maybe Jeet Kune Do, you're like, oh, right on. Somebody's got like a, you know some foundation yeah exactly I, I always root for the guys who have a little bit of a traditional past or or like guys like stephen wonderboy thompson and stuff like that you know we, when you mm -hmm. see that that sparring stance that karate sparring stance from the from the 90s or something it's really cool and i really root for, for yeah. those guys i actually know guys no, 
I actually know guys. I, I have a friend of mine who, who's a great fighter, and you ask him, "Where did you start? Mm -hmm. Which martial art did you start?" I started with MMA, and I'm like, "What? Oh my goodness, that's that's yeah. really not what I was expecting to hear." But it, it, he's great. That means that he's probably very well, you know, very well balanced in a, a, a lot of things that he does. He actually he's fighting in Bellator, but uh, you know, um, still, it's like I. I I, I, I'm a huge believer of the, of the, I think it was Bruce Lee that said that you should have a foundation first, like a, a basic structure with a single traditional martial arts. And only then will you be able, when you get good at it, obviously, and an expert at it, uh, I should say, then you should, you know, uh, explore other areas and make sure that you try other things that would, you know, enrich your, your arsenal, I guess. Right, right. Well, you, you know, I mean, you can become a an effective fighter simply by learning MMA, right? You know, but the, there's a certain aspect of aspects of discipline that you do miss, and the philosophy that you do miss, and and, and you know, it's not just being the, the traditionalist. It's it's you just they were martial arts were made for more than just fighting, and that's cool if that's what you want to do. I just want to go in there, I want to get the belt, and you know, get some money and. Get, get on the cover of whatever cereal box and it's all good, you know, but it, it's, it's great when somebody comes along that's had like a, that's actually studied, you know, and I think jujitsu is sort of like that because many of them do kind of go through the rigors of jujitsu, even though it's probably, it's probably been sort of uh, angled to be a little more specifically just for the, these guys that want to go in and fight rather than learning about jujitsu. Yeah, I think jujitsu brought back the whole discipline thing in the, in the sense that if you say that you're like a blue or a purple belt in jujitsu, ju people go like, oh, okay, oh, okay, you must be legit. But, you know, you got a lot of, I don't know, taekwondo or karate guys who are, and gals who are black belts, and it's like, oh, so you're 12 years old and you're a be black belt? I've heard of some stories like that, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> but yeah. um, it's you, you touched on a great subject, which is I think that people should not look at martial arts as only a means of self-defense or fighting because, you know, for example, I, I'm, I, if I relate to my story, I became a stuntman because of martial arts and it was not because I'm a ring fighter, because I'm not. What helped me the most was, I don't know, the flexibility, the jumping ability, the, the, the coordination that I brought from traditional northern Shaolin Kung Fu just like you, because I know that you started off with traditional martial arts. And I can definitely yeah. see that the more ample the movements that you begin with, when you have to make them a little bit more, a little bit shorter or more effective, like Jeet Kune Do and stuff like that, it's going to be easier for that guy to, to transfer into that. And I really can tell that uh, you would be, and you obviously showed it on uh, some movies, a guy who would portray a lot of fighting styles with ease. Would you say I'm right? Mm. Uh, I'd like to think you're right anyway. <laughs> yeah, without um, boasting. <laughs> you, you're, yeah. You, you're actually really good. I, I mean, I had a chance to see oh. some of your stuff, and I was like, whoa, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm talking to a guy that's been doing some stuff here, man. I was impressed. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Coming from you, it's, it's, it's obviously yeah. an honor, but uh, I mean... <laughs> progressing progressing no, slowly progressing slowly <laughs> no it's great your 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 moves are really smooth yeah you know one thing you do that's it's great is that you know i can tell you you stretch and you you keep your body open and fluid because you know there's a lot of fighters that learn like when we're talking about the ufc you know you yeah. see a lot of and we talked about this you know the, for, especially for a time i mean it's changing a little bit now but the kicking was always just a kick, you know, they'd kick the body, they'd kick the leg. And then you have guys, like you said, like Thompson that came, uh, Stephen Wonderboy, they come in. Or do you remember the first time that uh, Anderson Silva do delivered that front kick? And everybody was like, what was that? Yeah, it was like yeah. They didn't even know it was a front kick. And then you've got somebody that every once in a while somebody throws a hook kick in, you know, where you, for, for those who don't know, you know, it's like a reverse kind of the roundhouse. You bring your foot up. Bill Wallace, who I clocked me that. with that one time, he gave me a minor concussion from what? it. What? Really? He, you know, he picked the, yeah, I got him, yeah. One time we were sparring and he fucking rocked. Excuse my language. No, no, no. Oh my god, no. he rocked me. You're, you're, you're. And he rocked this me. is this is a PG. Uh, what do you call it? PG uh, twenty five. PG thirty. Uh, R rated. R rated. Oh, okay, it goes <laughs> yeah. up a little bit. Okay, you don't get, worry. You don't don't get that out of me too often, but I think I was having a flashback. <laughs> no, no. But yeah, like you, you get a hook kick and in in. Um, I remember when they first started pulling this stuff in, and I, it's funny because I think quickly when the when the uh, I always said this when the. Um, 
the UFC started, they sort of eliminated some of those traditional kicking styles, like, oh, that, you know, that kind of traditional martial arts is not going to work here in the cage. You know, it's going to be this more, whatever, it was jujitsu and working its way back into Muay Thai or whatever it was. But then some people started bringing those moves back in and it freaked everybody out. Mm-hmm. Like the leg kicks even, you know, just the simple leg kicks that was coming in from Muay Thai. But the front kick, the hook kick, even the spinning kicks, they were like, at first it was like, oh, that stuff's all in the movies. But now when you watch guys and they're getting away with it all the time and it's catching people off, you know, they're just not expecting it. So it's great to see that that come back in. I'm, I'm really happy to see it. And, um, you know, I, I mean, just just sort of like a little, yeah, somebody's <laughs> doing their homework. Yeah, 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 finally, man. I've been waiting for this my whole life. Yeah, yeah. I, we got You got a lot of nice uh, wheel kicks and stuff from like guys like uh, Edson Barbosa and, and, and whatnot. And I, oh, I really love. Yes. Because I, I was not, you know, it, it took a while for me to get accustomed to UFC and MMA because I always liked, I, I, I always grew up watching, you know, since my references in the movies are some of the guys who were great in forms, the guys like Keith Cook, uh, guys like, uh, I don't mm-hmm. know, you know, a, a lot of the Asian Hong Kong movies, just like yourself or the ones that, that I think you, you're uh, in love with as well. Uh, and guys mm-hmm. like from Beijing Opera School, you know, Peking Opera School, guys like Yun Hua and uh, Yun Bio and yeah, those guys yeah. have such great kicks. Or the, the 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 Korean one, the Kim Won Jin, you know, the guy from Operation Scorpio. Of course, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, great movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you ask me, the greatest kicker of all time in movies, I will have to say, oh, it's a toss. It's a toss up between Kim Won Jin and I don't know. I don't know who who would you say is the best kicker of the movies? I'll tell you. If you have to choose who, for one. me, yeah, I, I would. I, I mean, there's not even a, uh, a hesitation for me. It's Dorian Tan. Tan Tao Ling oh, from Tan Tao Ling, yeah. the Hot Cool Novichus Leg Fighters. I worked with him for a while. I, yeah. I, I managed to meet him in the late 90s, and I got to spend some time training with him, getting to know him, And I, which is I, because outside of Bruce Lee, he was, he was the one that inspired me the most to, to train and to make, and to make, want to make martial arts movies, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh so getting a chance to spend time with him and and even uh Dor- um uh, Lee So Nam the director of the movie and Don Wong Dao who played the other character in the story you know I've I've got to know them all at some point or another and it's like being in the world of the hot cool and the vision but yeah to answer your question he is uh for me my uh by far my favorite <laughs> Yeah. You watch the leg fighters, hot, cool, and the vicious. Watch uh, even the tattoo connection if you're a fan of uh, Jim Kelly. Um, yeah, I am. I am. You know, I am. So yeah. And and uh, what's the the name of the other one? Uh, the other movie with Tantali is uh, the leg fighters. Leg fighters. Leg fighters. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I have a, a company I co-founded uh, called Pearl River. It's a Blu-ray uh, company that that we're we're taking old classic films and restoring them and releasing them, uh, you know, on Blu-ray with special features and stuff like that. But the first one we did was the leg fighters. That is amazing, man. You got so much on your plate right now. I mean, it's 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 wonderful. Life's to... short. Life is short. Yeah, man. It's like, yeah, it, it really is. And it, it's like, uh, well, mm-hmm. uh, you're reminded by saying that you're actually reminding me of one of your latest movies, Appleseed, which I'm, you know, I, it got me to cry like two times. And uh, uh, well, and uh, I, I, I should say that I did not know, like, only maybe 10 months ago or something that I catched you up on the Instagrams and whatnot. And I saw what you were up to because mm-hmm. obviously I knew you from the first movies, uh, you know, final impact to be the best and uh, all those movies that, uh, um, I love from PM entertainment. And, you know, you were like the Brad Pitt of martial arts. And now I see that, okay, this guy has so many much more layers to him. And he's not only a martial arts movie nerd like myself, but knowing a lot more. But he's also writing, producing, directing. And I'm just blown away. It's, it's like I'm watching for like, it's like I'm having a little bit of a recap of your life so far of your work. And I'm watching you grow right now as an artist, which is really stupid of me to say, but it's, it's funny, you know? And uh, <laughs> so, that. so to, just to, to make, just to make sure I get a little bit of, 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 of what's going on right now. So 
what's in your plate right now? So you're, you said you had a lot of meetings and you're in a hotel right now. Where, where, what, are, what are you doing nowadays? Traveling around. World, the, yeah, I, I tra the, the world is my, my home now. Oh, nice. um, what am I doing? Well, you know, on that subject, you know, I had done a movie called The Siren that uh, was like 96 or 97. I'm sorry, what's the name of the movie? I lost I, you there for a second. I lost you there this, for a second. This, Here I am. I had to call the office. I had to go. It was like the worst thing ever. I'm so sorry, brother. It must be like three in the morning for you. Uh, are, are I know you, what we were talking about, though. I remember. Uh, are you a nice guy okay. when it comes to those situations, or are you one of those guys that just no, lose no, their no. time? Are you really a Mel nice. Gibson type? My, 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 no, no, no. no <laughs> I'm Mel. I've, I've, uh, my mom is like the most... I grew up around my mom, and she is like the most e even-tempered. I've never... She gets... She's. I, I get... I'm like... Mel Gibson compared to her, you know, so <laughs> I can, to me, it's just like, it's not worth it. You know, it's like, and I know everybody's usually, unless somebody's obviously being a jerk, everybody's trying their hardest. So you just, it's just frustration, your own internal frustration. You just got to yeah. kind of go, it's all good. Baby Zen, baby Zen, uh, baby Zen, baby Zen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah deep thought. Uh, I just feel bad. I just, I, you know, I just feel bad when I'm obligating to do, I mean, my thing is, is when I'm obligating to do like, that's why if I ever show up on anything late, even like a minute, I'm like, I'm like kind of a little like mad at myself, you know. You uh, you told me that you started uh, after uh, Fist of Iron with uh, Matthias Hughes and uh, who else was in it? Uh, Art Camacho, Marshall Teague, Marshall Teague, Marshall Teague, uh, and, the, and the guy from the guy Sam from Jones. Flash Gordon, the guy from Flash Sam Gordon, Jones, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. and uh, Eric Lee, Eric Lee, yep. Yeah, he takes he takes a punch good. Oh, he takes a lot of punches good. He takes a punch good. Yeah, he takes a lot of punches good. <laughs> it had some good dialogue in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, uh, there's uh, something about that. Movie, can you yeah. uh, can you hit a, a hundred mile fastball? Not in a million years. She's going one hundred and ten. Wow. She's going one hundred and ten. And I was like, oh, look at this guy, okay, man. Some of them were good. Some <laughs> of them were good. Hey, buddy, tell me the truth. Is she out of my league? Fastball, not in a million years. She's going 110. No, that was great, man. No, I, no, no, no. I, I, yeah, I like playing sort of off. Like, thinks he's cool, but he's not. You know what I mean? No, man. It's great to see that's a guy on, with suspenders going like, "I'm going nowhere," so that's okay. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Honesty will get you nowhere. I'm going nowhere, so that's okay. <laughs> it's like that was like the toughest that was the toughest movie ever shot in malibu california i can tell you <laughs> the toughest yeah <laughs> oh yeah 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 it's it's uh yeah it's it's a a, a rich uh a rich people's place that you're in with the, the with victor the destroyer barag I, I know all the lines you can tell oh i'm not reading god. i swear I, I know all the lines so you know. i saw that i noticed that <laughs> yeah. my gosh you know that was shot at the uh producer's house Aaron Schiffman, mm. who produced that movie, that was uh, shot at his house. And what was really cool was that uh, Nick Nolte lived right across the street. And so sometimes he would come down and watch us while we were shooting. <laughs> it was great. I was like acting and fighting in front of Nick Nolte. I was like, hey, oh, my God. Yeah, you were like, so this, is, this so, might be the casting of a lifetime, you know? No. That's like, uh, did he... Did he, did he come over in, in, in his robe and his pajamas or something like like that movie with Kinda. the Richard Dreyfus. What's the name of that movie, Richard Dreyfus? Oh, Down and Out in Beverly Hills. Yeah, I love that movie, man. I love that mm -hmm. movie. Yeah, yeah, with yeah, Bette Midler. That was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, right. mm -hmm. Richard Dreyfus is my favorite actor, believe it or not. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. I actually uh, worked with his brother, Lauren. Really? Um they kind of look alike yeah i did a, huh. i did a pilot you, you'd be as in, when you're in hollywood you'll learn a lot especially when you've been around you see a lot of actors who who will talk to you about some pilot or movie they did that you don't know about because it never got released but we shot i shot a pilot with him for castle rock uh -huh. when seinfeld was on um on uh hiatus and i was i got the i booked the lead on a pilot it was a sitcom and he was the producer and i was like i was like one of the turning points in my life one of many that w went straight up for two seconds and then came crashing down <laughs> <laughs> oh no man no, it, it was like well, it was picked up for uh 13 episodes and then two weeks later uh shelly uh lansing who runs paramount said no nah, i don't want to do sitcoms 
this year, this year let's not do any sitcoms and i was like oh no no i got a sitcom don't do it oh so, man out of a happened. whim right it's like um no nah, i'm not gonna i'm not doing yeah. that nah not not doing that yeah okay whatever but anyways uh you were telling me how after that movie fist of iron you decided i don't want to be the ring well, guy i don't want to be typecast as a fighting <laughs> guy as a ring guy no more of these right yeah and you started uh, yeah uh, i'm done uh, yeah Yeah, I had done. I just realized I, w I was stepping in the ring again. I liked what you were talking about. I liked the character because it was a little different than what I had had done in some ways. And I liked this idea of the guy living in his, you know, his uh, Mel Gibson style lethal weapon, living in his yeah, thing trailer. on the beach. And yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so I said, I'm going to go do it. And I, plus, I wanted to work with Matias, who at that time I was going, oh, this guy's going to be a jerk. I can just tell. You know, you see him in his movies, I like, come in peace. And I was like, he's going to be a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's gonna be a dick. And he showed, he was the nicest guy ever, man. So, um, but yeah, I just, I had, I had, um, by the time I was done with that, I just, you know, I, 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 I just knew I didn't want to, I, I mean, I could have kept making money doing that. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's, you know, you're making money, you're having fun, you know. But I just felt like uh, at that time, I wanted to start trying different things and mm -hmm. I was doing a lot more TV and I started going to a lot more comedies and, and, and then by the time I did ghost rock in 2002, somewhere in there where I, I, um, was basically going, listen, I want to do a Western. They said, well, you only do it if you do martial arts. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll, let's, let's write some martial arts and then that's fine. Um, but, uh, by at that point, after I'd had that experience, I said, I really want to start putting my brain into some some directing and some producing and some writing. And so for the next number of years, I really kind of stayed away intentionally from doing action, even though every day I train, you know, I train every day. But over the last, I mean, I did a couple of things like Jabberwock and, and um, uh, you know, there's a few films where I did some fight scenes and some TV shows where I did some fights. Again, you'll never see it. It's a, it was a TV series called Presence. And it was uh, directed by uh, John Ridley, who won the Oscar for writing uh, t 12 Years a Slave. Mm -hmm. And um, I played the main bad guy, and it was some great fight stuff in it. And it was just, it was such a cool a pilot, and got tossed again. So do you um, miss, do you I, miss maybe, it every maybe once in a while? people don't hire me, because, uh, oh, but yeah, I was, what I was going to get to is, though, oh. I have now a stack of action stuff I've been working on the last couple of years that we're just starting to pull together. One that I'm just going to direct. But then three of them I'm going to be in. Um, oh, excellent. And man. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's it's like, you know, I'm like, oh, I better do it now before I'm kicking people. I told that to Marty Cove. I was like, we better start. We just should, because he was going, let's do something together. I go, well, we better do it soon before we're doing it in wheelchairs, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think it was, I spoke with Lauren Evadon and he was like, oh, who the who the hell would oh. want a guy my age uh, to, to, to portray a character who's, who's into action? And I was like, What? Have you heard of, I don't know, Mel Gibson? And, and I, I mean, I always refer to Mel Gibson because he's one of my favorites, actually, in, in, in the, the movie business. And guys like Jason yeah. Statham and, and, I don't know, a lot of action guys like Stallone. I mean, hell yeah. I mean, it's much better, it's, it's much better to watch a, a, a more mature actor who you look at him and, and, and you see he's gone places, you know. He's been to stuff, he's been to toughness, and uh, now he's like... Uh, shooting guns and running away and stuff like that because, you know, to, uh, the <clears> truth <throat> is I'm not in, even though I'm a stuntman and I really love action films. I'm I'm much more into the '80s and '90s action movies, and I'm not exactly a huge action movie fan. I I would much rather mm. nowadays watch a good solid drama than actually watching, for example, an Avengers movie. I'm actually not. I'm not one of those guys, even though I would love to be in it or participate in it in, in, in some way. I'm really not uh, right. a huge action for the sake of action fan. So I really relate to what you're saying in a way. And uh, actually, <laughs> while we were waiting for you, we were checking out old videos of ours just for fun. I was checking out my Instagram because you reminded me of something, which is at first. And, you know, this is not even... This is not even a comparison, but I started out as a, a personal trainer showcasing my stuff here in Portugal, and I became kind of kind of famous here in Portugal, which is a very small country. And you know, I went sure. to all the course, you know, of going to the day t daytime TV with all with all the old the old people, you know, like clapping, and I'm teaching them all the exercises and the shoulder presses with the water bottles and stuff like that, stuff that you can do yeah. at home to lose some weight, you know. And I've done that. 
too much and now i'm very much typecast as a fitness guy and if i want to do something else it's mm -hmm. like oh no you're a stunt man you you fall you do the splits and i found this great video that i i'm, I'm gonna show you right now which is one of the worst things i've ever done in day tv yeah. check it out man check it out it's so funny man <clears throat> You know, this is like a oh, guy, yeah. a, a, a guy from the audience, and then. <laughs> <laughs> what an what an ass, man! I was like, yeah, this is a great oh. exercise for you to work on your abs, and then the guy gets up and he's like so dizzy that he goes back. Oh, but what's my. funny? I saved the jug. Look, I Whoa. saved the jug. <laughs> <laughs> you did good. So, oh, that's good. Man, I was just remembering. Was you know, you you made me walk down memory <laughs> lane. I was showing this to my director and my editor, and we were like, "Oh man, we were having such a blast watching this." So, uh, yeah, not to be typecast. That's that's the chapter <laughs> that you should write. Not I, to be typecast. You know, and there's I actually had such an interesting story about that because yeah. I did a movie called The Storytellers uh or late 90s i guess it was um and it was a comedy and it was the lead in this comedy tippy hedron from the birds was in it uh mitzi capture um brad dura from one floor of the cuckoo's nest um zach um gallagher from the the, the gremlins you know mm -hmm. it was a good cast wow i really wanted to do it really bad it was a part i'd never played you know on in a film before so the director was like no you know i can't i mean he's like this guy you know why should but the producer knew me And so she was like, you got to read this guy because she knew me in real life and knows, I'm, you know, how I am in real life. She's like, you got to read him. He's like, well, he's an action guy. You know, I see these movies, these kung fu things, you know. So I said, please, please, please get me in. So she goes, go on. And so I went out and bought these fake, ugly teeth and I put them in my mouth before the audition. He said, would you come in? And I went, sure. And I walked in and said, hi, how are you doing? And I had these really terrible teeth in my mouth. And he looked at me for a second. He didn't crack a smile. He went, what, actually, can you just step out for one more minute? I said, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. You know, walked out and was like, oh, God, I shouldn't have done that. I went in. He had me read. I left. Later, they called me back that night and said, you booked it completely. And the director, James Hickox, he uh, said he just, when you walked in with those teeth, he, he wanted to laugh so bad He said, I mean, he said he needs you to step out for a minute because he thought, he said within two seconds he knew he wanted you for the role. <laughs> Now, wow. the story, so I do this movie, and I do this comedy movie. If you ever look it up, The Storytellers, I think it's on Amazon Prime. It's actually one of the things I'm most proud of as an actor, you know, because it was just so much fun. And that afterwards, he went to direct a film about a killer crocodile that, that corners all these surfers in the philippines somewhere or whatever and he was like mike i want you to come in and play this lead you know it's a great part of surf and i was like let's do it so you gotta come and read for the producers i'm like i don't care i'll read i got in there and read and when i left he called me that, that night and said you know what the producers thought you did great but they go he's a comedy guy we saw him in the comedy movie he's just funny and and, and it was like they were so stuck on what i did on that movie i couldn't go back to doing an action film and i was like This is so nuts how this works, you know what I mean? It's oh, this perception. Man. Yeah. I mean, man. But that was that was a ninja move, man. That was a casting ninja move that you did that you did you pull off. That's so <laughs> that's so clever. You Gotta knowing Yeah, you knowing firsthand that they 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 thought you were the action guy and not good enough for anything else, you know. Like it's 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 very difficult to make people get a different notion out of you that they than they had before you know you're not just the book by the cover and uh that's what i like uh, like sure. about your work is that you have so many layers and actually i haven't seen that movie that you were talking about it's called the storytellers storytellers yeah. I, i have never yeah. seen that one but i saw some of the new ones i just saw uh, god's ears kudos man we're gonna oh, get right, to that right, right. yeah and i saw uh apple seed and i was like okay maybe he's more into the drama like characters or he's versatile that way and i was actually thinking that i never saw you in a comedy so i was like uh, yeah you're, you're you're just telling me that you were in a comedy yet so i gotta i gotta <clears throat> browse through a little bit it's actually some of the movies are not uh, available in portugal because some of them are in streaming mm. websites Uh, you know, so oh, right, right, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not that easy sometimes. But uh, I actually found a couple, and I, I want to watch, um, bro, uh, broken memories. Bro memories yes. Broken memories yeah. with Ivan Sergey, who I remember from uh, Jack and Jill. I think it was the TV show. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. yeah, good old Ivan. Yeah, and he, uh, he's in the Butterfly Guard too, which is coming out. He's, um, he uh, actually plays my bro brother in that one. But um, Ivan's great. I love Ivan. That one's still in post production, right? 
Yeah, I've got, I've got four films in post production right now. They got I got all screwed up from last year, you know. But now they're almost all well, three of them are almost done. One of them's still a little bit kind of lagging. But so, what's a typical day for you like nowadays, including the training? Because people want to know. I mean, you said you work out every day, so I want to know what do you do to keep in shape. Well, it was interesting because normally I, I do. I roll a lot. I spar a lot. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I haven't been sparring as much. I remember when, <laughs> when I was much younger, I I went in to meet with Emilio Estevez to play him uh, to be his double for something. But I had just had done some sparring the night before. This big old black guy, and I remember he was like, he was really cool, and he talked to me. I'm not saying that's not why I didn't get it, but I just remember going, I got to be careful. I can't start coming into these movies with black guys. Oh, yeah. But the funny thing is, is doing the butterfly guard. Um, Scotty Epstein, who plays one of the leads in it, he um, he had a black eye right before we started shooting, and I was like, "So you, if you watch the movie, his black eye comes and it goes, and it comes and it goes." But oh, I thought man. it'll work in that because he's probably <laughs> training all the time, right? Yeah. So he just keeps getting a black eye in the same eye. That's all. Yeah. Um, so you do jujitsu um, as well? So you do jujitsu a little bit? Yeah. Mm, mm -hmm. cool. I picked that up. My I used to study with Gene Labelle doing judo, mm -hmm. um, but there was a lot of grappling involved. I mean, his you know his is a little stylized to his 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 deal um who well, i love gene gene's like you know one of my my heroes in life um okay, that's amazing, but uh, I, i've always been you know a big stand-up guy I came out of karate tournaments when i was younger and and uh so i love kicking and and punching and and i remember going into um i remember when i came to la i was at um at the Inosanto Academy because I really wanted to study with all of bruce lee's students you know mm -hmm. and at the time chad um What's his name? Chad of directs all the John Wick movies. I always forget his oh, last name. Oh, Chad Stahelski. Chad Stahelski. Right. Yeah. He was there, and we were training together. And I remember one time, because I was always throwing kicks, and I think they were a little going into their more into their collie thing, and they were more into their like. So they they would start pitting me up against people all the time because they were like, when he kicks, take him down. And I remember <laughs> all these guys kept trying to take me down, you know, and it was because I was throwing kicks. But but particularly at that time. I mean, patting myself on the back, I sound like, but you know, they were so good at that time. It's kind of, it was kind of like watching, you know, I don't know, but it was like, cause they weren't prepared for them. It's like we were talking about earlier that it would just, I, I, and I was very prepared for people taking me down cause I'd studied, you know, trained it so long often. But, but I, I think for me, um, You know, I just, I, martial arts just kind of keeps the head together. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I love what it does with your body and I love feeling like, um, You know, it's actually kind of interesting because yeah. I I trained so traditionally for a long, long time. And then I met a guy, I don't know if you've heard of a guy named Tony Blauer. Oh, yeah, the, the guy you, from self-defense seminars. He's with CrossFit even, yeah. Right, I've known Tony for uh, 25 years now. But I remember it was kind of through him I, I realized I got in, what happened to me? I can't remember. I got injured or sick or something really bad. I hadn't trained for three weeks. And right when I was getting better, I hadn't even started training yet. There was a little confrontation that happened in the street. And I remember I almost got into a fight with this guy. And, what happened? But it was, what happened? God, it was, it was, I actually, he actually attacked me from behind. Oh. I think he was on, he was on something. Oh, it was like a classical, classical thing where, you know, I'm walking up a street and I'm, and I was going, guys, what? there's a guy, it seems like he's walking really close behind me. And I go, hmm, whatever. I stopped at a, a, a store and it was closed. And so I turned back around, and started walking back the other way and I passed him because he was behind me. So I kind of went past doors closed. Open. And then as I was walking in the mirrors again, I was like, he's that guy's behind me again. And right when I was saying that, I felt this, some, just something clock. I just felt it from behind. Right. Holy fuck, man. And I turned off with, I squared off with the guy for a minute. He was like, you could just tell he was like all amped up and he was like kind of pumped up. He was like, come on, come on, come on. You know, I was like, oh man. But I remember what had happened was mentally, I was like, my first thing was, God, I haven't trained in like four months. This just sucks. But I went, but why do I feel so comfortable? This is all happening in a millisecond, this, this mentality. Wow, yeah. I go, but why do I feel so comfortable? And I realized, I said, you know why I feel comfortable? Because I feel like I don't right now have to throw a perfect roundhouse on this guy. I feel like I don't have to throw a perfect, you know, back fist on him. I feel like all I'm going to do is make sure I take him out if he comes at me again. And that's it. I don't care if it looks sloppy as long as it's effective. And I remember in that moment going, I actually feel more comfortable not feeling my, my, my precision is trained, you know, because I'm always working on just getting up here, getting here. But it was like, I felt like I could throw that out. If I look like a sloppy fool and I get in there, whatever it is, uh -huh. as long as it's effective, 
And so it taught me something about like getting too caught up in your own regiment of being perfect. Because sometimes if you, I know about you, but I, I mean, I've, I've avoided pretty much most confrontations, but there's a few things that have happened, you know? Um, and that was one of them, you know, but it was so textbook out of a cartoon, you know, where somebody just attacks you for no reason. I don't know the guy. I never heard of him. He was just, he was just pumped up. I was probably some ex war criminal in his mind or whatever. And, and he came at me again. I swerved out of the way and I clocked him once. I said, back off, back off. I just kept telling him, I said, back off. And he just kept screaming and yelling. And then he took off. And he, I don't know what he did. He just, I think he just like tried to tackle me or something from behind. But I do remember for a second, just for a second, there was like a, almost like a whiplash where I blacked out, but I came right back. Oh. Cause I remember there being blacked out for a second and then just seeing him. But but I was like already in a stance, like in my subconscious, I had gone right back into a stance, even though I was unconscious for a second, you know, wow, yeah, it was really weird. Yeah. Hey, it was a weird story. No, no, <laughs> man, it's it's uh, it's probably your it's going to sound corny as fuck, but it's, it's probably your artistic expression battling with the effectiveness, you know, like what's effective in a real fight does not have to be precise and beautiful and all those roundhouse kicks and wheel kicks and hook kicks and stuff like that. And it's like effectiveness and roughness coming together with you. And, and you're probably, I don't know, you strike me as a guy, I might be wrong, obviously, I don't know you, but uh, you strike me as a guy who's, who does a lot of thinking. I mean, you're probably always on your head as well. It's the, so probably there's a lot of cathartic cathartic moments in, in when you when we get out of our head for a little bit and do some martial arts or some conditioning and then come back and a lot of ideas you know start flowing do you feel that you're most creative for example after working out because i do uh yeah actually yeah no completely i agree with you 100 there i i uh in fact that's why i train first thing in the morning is because i know for some reason it sets me chemically into a i mean i'm not always fighting first thing in the morning i might go and do weights and do some a run or something you know just some kind of power lift the tire or whatever it might be but just because it does activate whatever those neurons are and, and it is you know you do get i i do get very thoughtful afterwards you know um maybe not even thinking about the workout itself but it's just it's a matter it's something about that effort does um are you an early riser yeah normally but the problem, you my problem is i also go to bed late no i i'm, I'm ter i need more sleep in my life and i don't mm. do that you know i know yeah. it's, it's like my one probably one habit if i could fix that would probably help me live a little longer would be to get a little more sleep you know it's my brain does sometimes i have a hard time shutting it off mm. and then yeah. if i wake up in the middle of the night just for a reason just to roll over then i'm like oh movie storyline this that this, <laughs> yeah you know i'm like i'm working on been working on this um script with dolph lundgren Oh, and man. uh i just and i've been yeah it's been a long time we've been working on this thing for over 10 years oh. but it's kind of finally this place where we're, we're it's getting looked at and it just got some really good coverage and and um but sometimes it happens in the middle of the night because i'm so writing it so much that i fall asleep and i wake up in the middle of the night i'm like all of a sudden there's something about the story oh this would be good and i sometimes have to get up in the middle of the night and write something down or, <laughs> and then i'm screwed man and then i'm up for an hour and a half you know yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah, I, I'm not a writer, but sometimes I get ideas for videos and for YouTube videos and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, man, I got to write sure. this down because, you know, if you don't write it down, it never somebody somebody said once like a, one of those, I don't know, uh, entrepreneurship gurus said something like never trust your head as a filing cabinet. And I was like, yeah, right. It's in my chip. <laughs> no, it's not. It, you're going to lose it forever if you don't write it down right away. So, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, and. So, and my, it's funny because yeah. my, uh, I was going to say my, just on that note, my brain, sorry, I just had to click one thing there. My brain um, with dreams is like that. Like if I remember my dream for the, for less than probably two minutes when I wake up, I mean, oh, I'll yeah. see it. It's there. I'm like, oh, there's my dream. But then if, if I don't write it down, it's the weirdest thing. I will literally start forgetting it and I'll, I'll be forgetting it as I go along. I'm like, Oh my God, it's slipping. It's like, I feel it getting pulled out of my brain. I'm like, that is the weirdest thing. What did I just dream? And then five minutes later, it's like dementia or something. Yeah. I don't know. It's just it's wild. <laughs> no worries. It happens. But that's a good everybody. point about the brain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, it, I got, a, I got notepad after notepad. Yeah. So, uh, when you say early riser, what time do you usually get up? If it's not, you know, well, yeah, I mean, for question, some honestly. people, I will. No, no, it's fine. I, I have a friend of mine, this guy, Frankie Cassavetes. He's uh, John Cassavetes stepson and um, Nick Cassavetes half brother. You know, he um, 
I feel like I'm name dropping. I'm just pointing out who he is, but <laughs> yeah. he's a guy that gets up at, at 4:30 in the morning. He's a good friend of mine, so I was just bringing him up because he gets <laughs> yeah. up at 4:30 to go train boxers and yeah, fighters because, and guys. Yeah, right? I, that's why. I so asked. that's so me. That's yeah, why. No, I asked. no, no, me. I'm like six, six thirty, but it's like so you know. But then the problem is, I'm also going to bed sometimes at one o'clock, so I'm like five, five and a half hours. Um, but um, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty, pretty early. The sun's usually up i'm not yeah. up before the sun it's usually, so but, funny it's mm-hmm. so funny how this works because the cultural habit habits are so different you know it, it's like us portuguese or even spanish we are very late not only risers but also we go to bed very very late so for example discos but regular discos not the ones which have like after hours and stuff like that but clubs you know regular discos are open till like 8 or 7 a.m. here in Portugal. Whenever I listen to people, like American people, saying that, uh, you know, discos are closed at like 2 p.m. or 1 a.m. Uh, or, or 2 a.m., it's like, wow, that's really early. So to me, getting up early is like 8. <laughs> so when you say 6.30, right, that's, right, like, right. that's like already crazy for me. And then 4.30, <laughs> it's like, no, 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 that's way above crazy <laughs> that's why i asked <laughs> well i will force myself to sleep in if i don't have to get up i'm not like sometimes what will happen is my clock goes off at 6 30 yeah. whatever and i'm up and then i go no dude 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 because zen 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 give yourself another hour whatever it is just so i can be because of what i'm thinking i mean this is what i think in my head i'm like you're not recharging enough you're not recharging enough and that does happen i'm not like a nap taker but it's like i can sometimes feel like in the middle of the day i'm going i bet you i would have been a little more put together if i had if I had been like today, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, if I had just slept a little bit. <laughs> um, so, because this is also a fitness channel, I, I'm. Uh, if if you wouldn't mind getting a little bit more specific about your type of workout, so you said you do a lot of conditioning with tires and stuff like that. So I guess you're into the functional realm of lifting weights and maybe circuit training, and you do that before yeah. the martial arts. <laughs> Yeah, usually I do. I mean, that's usually my, I don't, the one thing I don't generally do is get up and do martial arts right off the bat in the mm-hmm. morning. You know, I will stretch and I will practice some of my kicks or and just to warm up and do a little shadow boxing. But usually if I do any training with some, with some outside of some bag work, you know, like I, I have the, where the gyms where I train, there's always some couple of heavy bags so I can work on those. But usually that stuff will all split the day up and do it later in the day. Um, there's a, a number of gyms in LA that I go to that, that have heavy bags and tr- guys I can train with. And it's sometimes it's tough. I mean, lately, you know, obviously it's been tough getting guys to, to want to, you know, train with you, but people are starting to get over it now. Everybody's kind of like coming down from the panic and it's like getting closer to you. Um, which has been interesting because one of the things that I did learn during this pandemic was because I was having to train by myself and not in the middle of nowhere was working with kettlebells a lot. Mm, I nice. had gotten, um, John Saxon, who's an old friend of mine, who gave me a bunch of his kettlebells. He had a number of them. And he gave me, like, I got a set of about six or seven of his kettlebells. And I didn't really, I met Pavel a few times, who is a a kind of a kettlebell expert that he's written a bunch of books. And he would would be up at John's house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he was friends with John. And, in fact, I think that's who we got the kettlebells from. But I would always talk to him about it. But I never tried it. So over the course of this 2020, you know, I was out in the parks and by the lakes and just like I started swinging them and working on and, and looking at his book because I got a couple of his books. And I was like, I really started to learn to love that movement of some of that old school, you know, Eastern, you know, training. Yeah. And um, the tire stuff. I mentioned the tire stuff only because there's a, the gyms I go to there. So they have their own mechanical flipping tires. But I actually from Gene LaBelle. He was teaching me how to use the tire, but in a very different way. Like, you know, you, there's a lot of flipping that you see with the MMA guys, but he would teach from gripping the tire and actually uh, holding from the side and th- learning to throw it sideways to practice like doing judo throws oh, with the tire. Nice. So when he taught me, it was grabbing the tire and throwing, and it would. It would like if you do it a lot, you, you're, so you, next day you're like your, your obliques and your intercostals are yeah. all sore, you know. Um, but uh, I love I love weights. I like the resistance of it. I also like what it's held. It, but for me, it's not the end all. There's, but there's something about pumping iron that number one helps me up here, and number two is what I feel helps the conditioning of the fighting for me. 
you know, I mean, yeah. there is a sense of, I mean, it's old school back in the old day where, you know, people would say, oh, wait, it's going to screw you up. It's going to slow you down. But it really doesn't. You know, it's just it's a matter if that's all you do, if you just bulk up and kind of, you know, you walk around. I know guys like that, but it's because that's all they do is lift weights, you know. Yeah. But once you if you're like guys like my friend Michael Jai White, you know, he's I mean, you look at that guy. That guy's huge. You know, yeah. but Michael can move as fast as anybody. He's you not know? slow. So, <laughs> he's not slow no, at all. He's not, you know. His psychic and, is like, you know, Scott Atkins like, oh. is the same way. Yeah. 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 He's got some, yeah, he's got some amazing kicks, you know, Man. and he's flexible. That's the other thing. He's got these big old legs, you know, yeah. but he's very flexible because he's, he stretches. So, you know, yeah, I, I think people are getting more in tune and especially martial artists. We grew up watching a lot of bullshit in movies. Obviously. I remember when I watched, I was like 14, maybe I watched that movie from Shaw brothers, Shaolin temple with Alexander Fushang and whatnot. Uh, uh -huh. and, and in that movie, they have that guy who they train to be a high jumper and he's like in a pit, right? And they put the ankle weights in right, him right, right. and they keep piling on the ankle weights and he's <laughs> for like, right. <laughs> for like a year, he jumps and he can't even move after a while. He has to sleep with those ankle weights and shit. And then one day they take him off and it's like, woo, couple somersaults, mm -hmm. woo, Arabian somersault. And I was like, imagine what that does to the brain of a little idiot like me, like in on puberty. So it's like my mom goes to bed and I'm like, yes, you go to bed. I'll be here oh watching God. Jackie Chan. So I was like jumping for 10 minutes. I thought that, you know, I would confuse endurance and stamina with power and jumping <clears throat> and plyometrics. I, I had no idea what I was doing. So I tried to jump for like 10 minutes with the ankle weights, thinking that it would help. And I believe that to this day, it actually helped in the way of getting my tendons and my joints a little harder because I was 13 mm -hmm. or 14 at the time and I was still developing. So if it didn't kill me, if it didn't injure me, it probably got me a little stronger than that. But still, you know, after a while, I remember this martial arts magazine called MA Training. I don't know if you remember that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. You were uh -huh. probably in that one. one as well. Weren't you in a... In a I think because Tony, I think, was in there too, Tony Blower. It was a great magazine because it actually, instead of just giving you the curriculum of the martial artists or the interviews mm -hmm. of saying like, yeah, I won this, I won that, your favorite martial artists were there giving you tips on how to perform. So I remember seeing right. this guy from uh, Taekwondo team from Mexico. I think it was Juan Moreno, his name or something. And he was doing plyometrics with his team. So he said, never do more mm -hmm. than 10 or 15 reps because what you want to do is you want to jump as high as possible. You want to get explosive. And I was like, oh, so I shouldn't do this for 10 minutes, <laughs> right? So, so this is like a bad idea. So it's, it's great to... to To see that the science or the bodybuilding or the, the functional training, you know, the martial artists are starting to get a little a, a little better notion and not just the old school approach like Okinawan weights and stuff like that. Maybe uh, doing a little bit of uh, weightlifting like power cleans and, and snatches or the, the, sure. the flipping yeah. the tire or, or rotating either with uh, sledgehammers or, uh, or uh, I don't know, plates. That really, really helps the conditioning, and you don't have to do it like a hundred times, you know. So it, it, it's, it was yeah. really a eureka moment for me. Oh, cool. That's great. <laughs> I like that, you know. Yeah. And there was another magazine. I can't remember what it was called. It, maybe you know, it was more current. It was more contemporary. It was like early 2000s. Like it was called, um, how was it called? Train Hard, Bleed Less, or Sweat Hard. I can't remember <laughs> what it was, but it, it was... No, it's really, it was a great magazine because it was all fighters. And it was mostly UFC guys, you know, doing conditioning exercises. But then they kind of morphed it into more of like a UFC, just sort of more about, you know, there's some techniques and stuff. Because that was what Black Belt Magazine or Inside Kung Fu was all about techniques. Occasionally a run or something. A mm -hmm. run to get better shape. But uh, this magazine was specifically geared towards fighters and the conditioning of fighters and i i thought that was kind of interesting because nobody was really doing that yeah you know? it's, so it's, it's like it's like train hard or something i can't remember the damn name of it. i wish i could remember but anyways look it up it was great i don't think it's it's called something else now because it has a different format but i i actually don't know that one but it's like it's like uh youtube video tutorials you know it's like it's some of some of the best things mm -hmm. that i've learned was from some old VHS tapes with people teaching tutorials or even on YouTube and stuff like that because 
that's a great way of sharing actually and uh um so it's 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 a lot better than just watching the regular interviews and getting a little bit more content from that um so if you don't mind yeah. my asking i i would i really lo like to know about your early days <clears throat> and uh, what were your first martial arts experience do you have any What was your first martial arts recollection? Did you watch a Bruce Lee movie and just had to go? It was. Learn it was Kung actually. Fu? It, was a, it was a Bruce Lee movie. It was funny because I went into it thinking it was a monster movie because it was called Enter the Dragon. <laughs> oh. And halfway through the movie, I, I turned to my mom's friend who had taken my brother and I, and I was like, well, when's he going to enter the dragon? You know? <laughs> and, uh, but by, <laughs> but by, by the end of the movie, I was like, that guy was pretty rad, you know? So I actually started Aikido when I was 10. Now I was also getting beat up in school a lot this time. So oh. I was like, okay, I learned to defend myself. So I studied, I went in and studied Aikido for, I was 10 years old, you know? I mean, I, I it was, and, uh, I loved it. Um, and it was great, but I was, I was feeling like, okay, there's gotta be more to this. So a couple of years later, I, um, entered something, you know, what you did, which is Northern Shaolin, which I studied under YC Chang up in Northern California. Again, it was very, you know, it was very conditioned, circulatory system, all about like how, you know, and learning the forms. But I was still like, ah, you know, you're especially at that age now, I'm 12, 13. And I'm like, you know, it's like, you know, I'll get a little something. And so um, I ended up joining a Kung Fu uh, school called Wu Jen Pai. And all these mm -hmm. guys were fighting in tournaments. And there was Tony Daniels and Ronnie Wright and these, these guys that I trained with. And we would just travel around and fight in karate terms. We'd get in this old beat-up Dotson and a bunch of us would go and Eric de Blasi. And it was, we were such a weird crew. And we would just go. Um, and because I was in Oakland, I was, uh, I came, was coming home one night from, I don't remember where I was coming home from. And I was hearing this, these guys in this alleyway going, hey, I don't know, turning this, hey, hey, vanilla, vanilla. And I was like, going, you know, and there are a couple of these black guys in the thing going, hey, Vanilla, come here, man. Come here, man. And I was like, no, nah, it's all right. It's all right. Cool. And it was like, they were like chasing me. I went to, so I went to school. I went to my school and Ronnie and Tony Daniels, they're both black. I said, man, these guys, I was like walking by and these guys were calling me Vanilla. And they were laughing so hard. They thought it was the funniest thing. A week later, when I showed up at class, we went in, we we're getting our geese on because we'd wear geese and spar. And they go, hey, we got a gi top for you. And they gave it to me. It was Michael Vanilla Flash Worth was <laughs> embroidered on the back of it. And so when I go to tournaments, that's what it would all say. You hear Vanilla Flash, Vanilla Flash. Vanilla Flash. Um, I had no idea. I never heard of that. <laughs> vanilla yeah, Flash. Funny, but Why don't you keep using that did name? That, so <laughs> I think today it might have some, I, might, I don't know, it might have some backlash. But, mm -hmm. but, um, but it would be a good one. Yeah, if I was ever going to have competed, maybe I would have. Oh, not right now um, you couldn't do that, so, right? Right now, it's like everything Probably is racist. So, know. yeah, you'd be racist I, just I for know, saying right? that. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. To myself. Boop, yeah, say yeah, it to myself. But, yeah. <laughs> I'm racist to myself. Oh, my goodness. Um, but I, but uh, so then, yeah, I did, that's how my, it was a lot of Taekwondo and, and karate competitions while I was living up in Northern California. And then I moved down to LA when I was 18. And that's when I got fully into Hawkins Chung at the Wing Chung studio and Dan and Asanto. And, Later joined Joey Escobar, who's a Taekwondo, where I got my my belt in Taekwondo, or it was Tang Sudo, really, um, and Gene LaBelle. And I just was like, I mean, I, I came down to L.A. for two reasons. One was I wanted to come down and, and be in films, but the other was I wanted to just study with all these great martial artists that I knew down there, you know, or down here. At 18, if somebody would ask you, <clears throat> pardon, um, if you wanted to be an actor or a director, what would you have answered? <laughs> At that time, I was, I really, and I mean this sincerely, was, was open for either because I just loved filmmaking. You know, Ray Harryhausen and Kung Fu movies and Roger Corman, all of these, these, these movies as a kid that I was growing up on, I was, I was enthralled by just the filmmaking process. You know, I, in fact, earlier on, I wanted to be like an animator. You know, I wasn't even wow. interested in being in front of the camera. And what, I came down to LA and I happened in the first, like, you know, three months or four months, a guy kind of saw me on Venice beach and said, Hey, you should be an actor. And I was like, well, I kind of act, you know, I do some, I like, you know, it's bullshit my way through it. Right. <laughs> But he, 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 he had never done it before. And he, and he, I'd never done anything, you know, and I, so, and he picked me up and I started auditioning and I started booking, right. You know, not right away, but it, you know, it took me a little while, but I mean, you know, within six months, within the year, I was starting to get my first roles and, and, uh, and I was loving that. I was enjoying it. And I didn't direct anything for, it wasn't until I was doing Acapulco Heat that I actually started to, to direct.
<laughs> yeah, you got to tell me some backstage stories of that show, man. <laughs> and no, I don't mean directing. Yeah, that was, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. I wish I were you back then. Oh, my goodness. If I were your mm. age... And had your looks, man. Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> oh, you're too funny. You're, yeah, you're right. You're crazy. Yeah, call me funny. Call me funny. It, it, yeah. was, it was pretty. Uh, it was pretty intense. I you mean, they dog, would bring, you. every month, six weeks, they'd bring models in from all over the world just to be extras on that show. It was like every, all my friends would be like writing to me. It was like the internet was just kind of starting. It was like, dude, man, what's going on down there on that show? And I'm like, I don't know. I just, I just sit in my room. That's all. I'm just, I don't know anything. Speaking of friends, I mean, <laughs> did you ever encounter, uh, or did you ever had, uh, did you ever have any any, uh, I want to say prob yeah, problems? I mean, like those friends that when you started doing movies and you just started getting a little bit famous, that uh, are like uh, uh, either thinking that you're way above your head already or too arrogant. Oh, you you want to <laughs> mingle around with us anymore, or. The other way around, those who get a little bit closer and hadn't been with you for quite a while, and then it's like, "Hey, Mikey, how's it going, man? Hey." Yeah, I know. I, does I that happen, that or really is it happen? Just... Oh, it, it does happen. I mean, it happens in different ways. I mean, when you are, you're right. When you're doing something and people know you're working, people will come out of the blue, but not. I've never had anybody call me arrogant. I'm sure that people think I'm arrogant. I mean, who knows what they really think? But I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah. I've had, I've had people like. And that's why I'm really cautious with my director's friends as an actor that that it's like I've got a number of director friends. They work all the time and I and, and I don't work with them. You know, I'm just like, I'm like, well, yeah, you know, and, that, and I've, see, I've had that happen where I'm doing films and I've had actor friends of mine that like kind of confront me over it. Like, why aren't you hiring me, man? Wow. And I'm like and I sit there and I go, it's it's tough because there's only so many roles that are in a movie. And sometimes, you know, it's just not the right person the right time or sometimes it's not always up to me you know what i mean sometimes i gotta i had friends i went for instance broken memories you were talking about I had people i wanted to hire on that but the producers come along in a film like that and say well we want this person over that person you know and and that's what happens so um but i've i so i would say that I don't know. I've never, I've never really experienced. But then again, maybe because I moved away from home, you know, maybe if people were hanging around with me, they might say something different. But I don't think so. I think it's been, you know, I'm pretty much. I think I'm pretty much the same. I guess. Because, because you, you at, at age 18, you lived in the a truck or or a car for six uh -huh. months when I first came to LA. Yeah. So, so my that, dog and me. That's like <laughs> you know, that's like the epitome of the American slash Los Angeles dream, right? Is like. Uh, You know, like yeah. uh, when I heard that in, in an interview that you that you gave before, I was like, wow, man, that's 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 it. That's the thing. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think it was also Jim Carrey that lived in a truck once. I believe so. Oh, did he? Yeah. oh my goodness. And, and what was that experience like? I mean, what did you do? I know it, you probably didn't have a lot. That's why you were in the in the truck. But what did you do for money? How do you how did you handle well, yourself? I was making money, but. And I was more about just saving and just trying not to, I was like, well, if I can, I mean, it's funny when I think about rent back then, it was probably like nothing. You know, I probably spend it on dinner now, but, um, it was, uh, it was funny because I wrote about in the butterfly guard, there's the, one of the characters that Scotty plays does live in his car. And I wrote about that specifically about some of my experiences where you live in your car, but when you're like meeting people and trying to impress them, you're like, yeah, I got a place in Venice. You know, <laughs> oh, good. You live in Venice. Yeah, I live in Venice. And I was thinking in my head, well, I do. I just park my car on the you know beach and I'm good. Um, but it was like I had the gym. My Gold's Gym is where I worked out. And that's where I would shower. I had a pager at the time. It wasn't even cell phones. You know, it was a, it was a pager. Um, and I had my dog. Somebody actually broke into my car one time while I was in there sleeping. Wow. <laughs> it was the funniest thing. Well, it was, I was in a truck. I had a truck with a, a camper shell on the back of it. So you had to, uh, from outside, because you can't lock it from the inside. You, you just turn it and flip it open. And so I was in there with my dog. And I remember it was the middle of the night one night. All of a sudden the thing just opened and this flipped up. And there was a guy standing there. And I stood up and I looked at him. My dog looked at him and he went, um, hey, you guys got a cigarette? <laughs> and i said no is that why you're you're in my truck and he's like sorry yeah i just thought maybe you might have a cigarette or something and then he walked off but i think he probably was like oh my god i wasn't expecting to see somebody in there <laughs> yeah that's funny man <laughs> i'm glad it, i'm glad it turned out all right um 
So, so a, a lot of good things come obviously from that uh, proactiveness because that's the I, I only hear proactive when I when I when I think of that that type of, uh, of, of things. So, how does uh, I think that your first uh, martial arts movie was the Final Impact. So how how did that come about? Yeah, that was that was. I had done some fight scenes and some TV shows and stuff like that, but um, Final Impact came when I was uh, through my manager. He called me up and said, "Hey, they're they're doing a film called The Flying Dutchman." It was called back then, mm -hmm. and uh, and so um, they originally were thinking about using Don on the dragon wilson but they had just worked with him on ring of fire so they said well, let's try and find some somebody new and so uh, in fact when i went into the office don was in there i think gary daniels was in there, there was a couple people in there and uh i uh i went in and i walked into the room and there was eric lee was in there and lorenzo lamas was in there and kathleen kinmon his wife at the time was in there and and i just went in there and worked with lorenzo and like threw kicks at him i oh at one point yeah they you know back you know do you they wanted you to see kicks and punches. So I was throwing all these kicks and spin kicks and doing all this crazy stuff. And, um, you know, I, and, oh, and Eric, it was funny because I, I got the job. I didn't know I had the job yet, but I booked the job and Eric Lee didn't realize they hadn't told me. So the next day I'm getting a call from Eric going, Michael, we had to get together. And we had to uh, work on your fight scenes. I'm like going, who is this? It's like, oh, it's Eric Lee. I'm like, we got to work on what fight scenes for your movie. And I'm like, what, what movie, what do you mean for the movie? And I was like, I was so, and then you hear this, hear him in the back. Going, oh, 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 I'm sorry. 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 And I'm like, oh, and now I was going to go, can we call you right back? And it was like, they said, Eric, you know, not tell him he didn't know yet. So then they had to call me up and go, you booked the role. And I was like, I did. And being the naive actor, I was like, I'm going to buy a house in Malibu now. I'm going to buy a new car. I'm going to buy. And then I saw my page. I was like, huh? No, I'm just kidding. But, but that's, uh, but that's, uh, that's how, Shit. that's how it started. Wow, yeah. man. Can we, do you mind if we watch a little bit of those scenes and you run them through like as, as if we were reacting to, to some of the fight scenes? I'm going to ask my director yeah, to sure. pull them up. I don't, uh, I don't know where they are. It, it's the, no, I have them. I have them. I have everything, man. <laughs> I have everything here. <laughs> you're prepared. I, you're really prepared. Of course. I, of course, yeah. man. So this is you against Gary Daniel. So it must have been your first. Oh, Gary. Yeah. That was my uh, How was second it? fight scene that would that we shot. What, was it? I mean, were you starstruck? Were you like afraid of, of, of I trying? Didn't, I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know Gary at the time, but they told me he'd done a couple of films in the Philippines, and I was like, hey, he looks like a pretty impressive guy. And I had just spent like, I just spent like two months trying to lose as much weight as possible, look like a lean little fighter, you know. And I come in, and Gary's so giant, I'm like, this guy's like 30 pounds bigger than me. Um, but uh, that was, we shot both the scenes with Gary, because I did this, and then we did another scene all in the same day. In fact, the whole, everything we shot in this bar um, was all in one day. I mean, they were cranking in this movie, you know. That's Jeff Langton. Oh, he's color yeah, Jeff. And I, I haven't seen Jeff in a long time, but we still talk on Facebook. But man, he was clubbing me a few times in this fight scene. But it was great. The great thing about this back then is, you know, we're there in this great crowd. They pull them all in. There's Fr Frank Reeves. Um, but I remember because it was the first time I'd ever done fight scenes. And one thing I had realized is that you got to warm your neck up because if you don't warm your neck up after you're taking punches like that over and over and over, then I for days was like, I couldn't even, I was like, Oh, my neck is killing me. This was towards the end of the shoot. Man, though. For sure. For sure. It's, it's something that sometimes we, we, we actually kind of forget because we're so used to doing the reactions, but it's like, no, no, you're, you're going to screw your neck and your neck up. This yeah. guy, the guy's really scary, man. And, and let me tell you the thing about this is, which is different than today, uh -huh. is that these fights that you're watching, see this like wide shot. Yeah, they would shoot the entire fight scene. We were, we would knew all the choreography. I mean, we would go from the beginning of the fight scene to the oh. end. I mean, we had the we were, went from the very so the wide shots are us like literally having going through all the choreography. Then the next day, it was usually the next day that we would do when there was no audience. They'll come in for these close ups. So right, this is all the two. They had two or three cameras going at that time. Um, but then all the close up you'd see, they, they'd come in and get the next day and we were just piece it, piece through the choreography again, but it was pretty exhausting. Like you, you kind of learned, like, I, I, at least I did. And this was kind of new for PM. I, they'd only done one fight film before this, which was ring of fire with Don. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and, uh, and so you, you know, I mean, it was pretty brutal. <laughs> it's like exhausting. Cause it wasn't like, go out and do a few moves and then we'll cut and we'll do it again. 
Mike Tony. He was like some real gangster out there in the. Yeah, that in, master uh, shot, that that first master shot where you have to go through the whole choreography. I mean, you you this, actually. Yeah. You, you even not right now, not here because you guys are obviously very talented and physically capable. But you know, I remember doing that. See, that's like, here. I landed my. Sorry to cut you off there, but no, I landed no, sure. on my shoulder there. Threw my shoulder out for like four days because when I when I mm. fell, I fell on my shoulder. How long I did it take that. you to shoot this one? How long did it take you? Well, we shot that the master shot like probably three times all in one you know one time and then mm -hmm. then we're done because they have the crowd there so they just wanted to get the whole crowd and yeah. then we came back the next day but the whole the fight so was it like two three days um i guess we were in vegas for like a week mm -hmm. so it was probably it wasn't all just my fights obviously we had or was it just me i can't remember i get confused with to be the best sometimes uh, no um, no you fought you fought art come no 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 art camacho fought someone right, art camacho, i'm not sure if it was yeah, you I fought art Yeah, you fought yeah, Art. Yeah, no, it was me. Yeah. Yeah, I fought Art, and I fought uh, Agro, uh, John Agro, who's the, the blonde Jackie, guy. whatever his name was in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He and I did a fight scene. And, uh, um, there was actually another fight scene we did that didn't end up in the movie. I think two fight scenes that didn't end up in the movie. In fact, when I was going back to do To Be the Best, they wanted my hair this length because they wanted to pull fight scenes from this movie and stick it in the other movie. And I came in and my hair was long and I was like, and they were almost like ready to like replace me the first day. I said, well, look, I'll cut my hair. I mean, she's going to replace me just because my hair's not short. I was like, and then eventually they were like, ah, just screw it. Leave your hair as long. It's fine. It's yeah, good. man. You look really cool in that <laughs> one. Man. Like, oh, so, come on, man. Eric Culhane. I hope you like to feel pain. I want you. That's too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> never saw that one as well That's never right. never ever <laughs> yeah, yeah clearly steven vincent lee i mean it was the same room where we shot to be the best is the same room oh, here in the sands that we shot that's this. why that's same why you thing. were that's why you get a, you get them confused yeah great great, yeah, great no, reactions man. It's great reactions i mean it's, it must be hard to to start the, you know getting into the fight choreography after being uh, a legit fighter yeah, yeah. this uh, is to be it's the same this is the same room <laughs> yeah so yeah steven Yeah, you against Stephen Vincent Lee. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you, you actually. But but it's like yeah, it's got that. You know, it's funny to watch the choreography now because there's a very like sort of art had a certain step by step sort of way he liked to do it, and then uh, you know with the with the shooting of it, it was very you get your wide shot and then you just come in and pick shots and pick them up like all that. Uh, well, except for that kick in the beginning of the kick, all that was all again one night. You know, we'd shoot the whole fight from beginning to end, beginning to end, over and over again. So Stephen and I were doing that, um, but it was funny because you know you mentioned like coming in as a real fighter and doing this. There was an adjustment, but then there was an adjustment after I did these movies and went and did U.S. Seals too because the way Andy Chang does his choreography from the Hong Kong aspect of it was totally different than the way like our camacho for instance would do it and so it was another readjustment for me at that point so at that point you, uh, they were doing it like hong kong <laughs> style like doing each each uh, like uh, i don't know six well, seven you know, so here, blows so, at a time and yeah and choreographing well as what's they go. different is right what's different is is like with these pm movies and and uh and fist of iron it's like you know there was a, a rhythm there was a rhythm there was like bam 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 and boom one 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 boom bam boom and there was almost like a you could almost predict sometimes on you know when you look back on it now particularly you could almost predict some of the aspects of it because of that rhythm now when you got to the 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 hong kong way like when i went out to to do um u.s seals and i was there we were there 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 they had a little more time to do stuff um We spent a week practicing. I remember getting with Andy, and he's like, Andy's like, okay, Michael, Michael, come here. This is what you do. This is what you do. He's like, it's just, it's like, the guy's on caffeine all the time. And he's like, <laughs> ready? It's going to be this. Bah, 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 I'm like, wait a minute, what? Can we, we're going to slow this down and, and one, two, three, go. And he's like, no, no, it's like, pause. And there's always this pause they wanted to pose because, you know, Isaac came out of the the um uh the uh, power rangers and he always wanted the the real intense you know which we again was something we didn't do with the kickboxing films even though there was a a rhythm to it we were still in there fighting it was like stay with your fight okay we gotta have a rhythm but it's still the fight but with the with the hong kong thing it's like you're fighting but then you're gonna <clears throat> you're gonna give them a moment you know and, and pause and it was so the whole drama the whole rhythm the whole pace was very different so it was like it was it was my first experience with it so i was like 
once again, like being reborn into the, which is great. I love it. I like breaking things and fixing them and trying to get them again, you know? So, oh, yeah. Can we watch uh, just a little bit of Fist of Iron? Fist of Iron? Oh, whatever you want. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> this is uh, Branch Chain Amino Acids, by the way. Oh, really? Just even think it was something else, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's scotch, man. Everybody knows that. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, here we go. Actually, this now, this is what I loved about this movie. And he's actually used to play football. He's passed away. He died of cancer. Oh, man. Years ago. Mm. His name's uh, is Nick. I think it was Nick. He actually lived on... Remember the little house that's in the movie where I'm tr with it, where Eric Lee and Sam Jones live? That was actually his place. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this was this was in uh, where was this Canoga Park I think somewhere in it writes out writes out of, out of L.A. But uh, this was actually I think my second day of shooting also. I remember this we shot this automotive stuff early on. And I think you know Richard Munchkin who directed this you know he did the first handful of movies with PM yeah he did Ring of Fire I, you know I really enjoyed working with him and you know he had a, he had a kind of a fun idea in his head and he was like not taking it too seriously like playing like this whole thing you know he just like <laughs> he just got a little goofy with it yeah this is so funny crank up the yeah. volume because he's got he's got to listen to this in, in French because it's in French <laughs> I stole it from YouTube oh is it oh, yeah yeah ça, je suis bien, ouais, ici. Hey, on se calme, les mecs. Je t'ai pas causé à toi, ma mignonne. C'est pas le jour, alors lâchez-moi, hein? Alors lâchez-moi. Do you know French? Tu la trouves mignonne, toi? Non, moi, tu sais, oui, mignonne. You don't want to know what you're saying. Not this, not this, right? Yeah, I probably don't, you're right. Lâche-moi. I just remember the lines in English. He takes the punch. Good. Yeah. Whoa. Nice Stephano, reaction, man. He scared man. me, man. Working with him, he was like, I mean, that dude was like intense. Uh, yeah. It's so funny to watch these films. I'm still trying to figure out if when they shot them, where they did with the original. Uh, I would love, in some cases, to find the original prints of some of these movies. I found Final Impact. Just because they're all cropped, as you can see in four by three, so they're all in square. But yeah, they were yeah. shot wide frame, you know. Mm -hmm. Boom! That headbutt. He always scared me when he was coming in with that headbutt. I was like, "Please don't hit me, man." <laughs> yeah, my first experience as a stuntman. Scary. My my first experience as a stuntman. I had a shitty coordinator, and he was like, "Okay, it's not selling for the camera, so get closer, get closer." I, I mean, and I was uh, like, "Okay." Closer. And of course, I, I, I had butt the hell out of the actor, and I was like, oh, so sorry, so sorry. It's obviously it's a little bit oh, my God, fault, yeah. but I mean, if a coordinator says just get closer because it's not selling for the camera, he has no he does he has no notion, no skill whatsoever. He doesn't know what the camera sees. I, so, yeah, I actually only hurt somebody once. On, I was on street crimes, and mm -hmm. I just it wasn't terrible, but it was like I was do, I had a guy in a headlock, and I threw my foot up to kick him in the chin, and. And it, they were supposed to kick him in the face, but it actually kicked him in the chin a little bit. And it messed up his, his lip it, or his tooth or something. Uh, what's the name of the guy you fight? Oh. I think it was Kisu was his name. Was it Kisu? Is that who it was? I think that was the guy's name. It's in the mm. alleyway in the back. And But if you watch it, if you watch the fight scene, it's in Street Crimes in the alleyway. When I do the when I do the kick, you'll see the kick go up. And if you watch me, you'll see me go... Ooh, like you see me react oh, really? for a second. You see me like because I just knew I caught him and I felt really bad. And that cuts away and I'm still fighting him. You, know? you, you broke. You Randy broke. was hilarious. <laughs> this is Randy. He he's nuts. This guy, man. It was like every time he's fighting, he's always doing the same thing. He's like, ah, ah, he's shaking his hair. Every movie he's in, he does the exact same thing. Yeah. I'm always going, Randy, are you doing that little crazy lion's mane thing again? He was to be the best. <laughs> Oh, here we are in uh, oh, these are the street fights the that you did before you, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, here oh, I slipped a little Wing Chun in on this fight with him. Yeah, I, I saw a little bit of trapping in some of your fights. Yeah, yeah. I just said, you know, I was training with Jerry Poteet at the mm. time, and I said, I said, all right, let me slip a little of this in. So this whole thing, I said, let me just do something with the with the stick that hopefully come out a little bit. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, there it is. Nice, nice. <clears throat> Great reactions on the guy as well. Cool. Oof. Damn, where do I buy my pants? <laughs> it's the 90s, man. It's like those, yeah, I was going to say the brand Automix because I saw Automix like a thousand yeah. times already. And the guy has Automix, of course. <laughs> nice. Yeah. 
Um, and see, that's why at the end I said, I got to, Randy, you make that freaking face all the time with it. I got to do it to you right before I hit you. So that's why I made the yeah, whole yeah, same crazy like, ah, face. And then you, and then you. Yeah. Okay. I remember when I was fighting Matias, I was like, okay, this guy's going to be, I wonder if he's going to be like really, and I come up, okay, okay, I'm ready to choreograph. And he goes, okay, but let me, Mike, let me tell you, he goes, I, I just had a shot here the other day. Just try not to hit me in the left arm. I was like, oh, okay, no problem. And he goes, and Mike, Mike, the hair, this is an extension right here. So I'm pull these out. I'm like, okay. And he's like, and also be careful. I'm like, Matias, can I hit you somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> that huge guy going like that. And he's such a sweetheart. He, he talks like, oh, you poor Oh, thing. he's the best. Yeah. <laughs> he, he is like after we we do some fights, he go, oh, that was good. That was good. Did you like that? That was good. You know. So it was like he was like a little kid. Oh, man, he's, he's amazing. He's, he's, I live in Bali now in Indonesia with my wife. <laughs> it's like it's God. Like, he's like he's he's like, so, he like lives like Tarzan. Yeah, that guy. yeah. And he has a monkey, man. He's got a monkey. I know. Yeah. This is Shoto. This There's is Shoto, Marshall. My I love monkey. Marshall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Show me his monkey. Life, like, kid. This is Shoto. <laughs> That's Richard Munchkin right there. He's the director. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that was him. Yeah, that was him. Yeah. Wow. Couldn't well, afford the extra, so he sat <laughs> in there. Well, if Hitchcock did that, hmm. That's true. Yeah, that's right. I think every director kind of sticks himself in somewhere. What's your favorite Hitchcock movie? Uh, I would say my favorite. I mean, I, I, you know, I picked the birds not because of Tippi Hedren, but I just, I love that area. I grew up in that area that we should. In fact, oh. I did a movie called War Wolves. And we shot in some of the same areas as the birds. Um, that's the producer right there. That's the guy that owns the house. Um, but uh, of craft wise, some of his earlier films were just were, you know, phenomenally amazing. You know, I mean, he had, he was such a skilled director. Wow. Yeah. So H had, had, <laughs> had you, hadn't you seen this in a while? No, I haven't seen these in years. It's funny to watch it and remember and who's even in it. Do do you like rewatching it, or is it like, oh, that's that's another guy there. Well, there's another there's face. A, yeah, well, yeah, well, a little bit. You know, <laughs> is just, but it's it's funny just to watch some of the things that I would like now. I'd be doing as especially as a director with my brain a little differently. Like I'd be like, oh, I'd be doing it this way and this way, or trying this, and you know, that's nice. Okay, okay, it, I won't bother you anymore with this. It, it, I I just saw a documentary on on Run Run Shaw. Uh, oh, yeah. Amazing. We never know if it's a myth or not. You know, the guy was like 107 years old when he when he passed away. And they said yeah. every actor in that documentary said that he would sometimes watch up to nine movies a day. And wow. I was like, that's how you become, you know, a master of your trade. Right. It's like. You do. You really got to be able to be open to your mistakes, open to the things that, you know, that work and, and, and try and build on them and not repeat them. Just because, oh, that works. I'm going to do that again. You know, you want to find ways of, of breaking them. And, and still understand it. Sometimes you need to deliver the same thing in just slightly different packages. You know, it's like if you're always can't always just break everything and, and, and fix it to the point where people don't recognize you and they're kind of expecting like, you know, when Stallone comes out, he's really smart. He knows how to, I'm going to be Stallone in this each movie, even though I'm going to try and change it up a little bit. I still got to deliver, you know, my Rocky and my Rambo energy, you know, that same thing that, that we come to expect. Um, so for me, yeah, I mean, I, I sometimes like to watch my films that I've worked on for one reason or another, just, you know, as an actor, you can't really help it. Like watch the, those, those, fights we just were watching you know it's like i mean it's funny because i feel better shape than i was then you know in terms of just in terms of what i know and in, in movement and stuff um but uh you know it's fun it's just it's a time capsule you know for the of the period and so it's great yeah you know? yeah i i just know that the audience would would love to rewatch these as well and get a little bit of your comment on it because i know that you're in a different phase and I know that you'd bring a lot more to the table or a lot of different stuff and I, I'd say better stuff as well uh, in, in terms of, of the sequencing and uh, and the, the, the maybe the angles or whatever and, and fight choreography as well. I would hope. It's, it's, but, I, but I also get that those movies sometimes, why people love them is because of even the things that you look back and go, oh, like I was making a comment on the pants, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh. but that's what's part of fun about those movies. We wear those big old baggy body alive, Tom, you know, Tom Otomir. 
Matrix or Atomics or whatever it was pronounced. You know, we'd wear those pants all the time. You know, that's part of the charm. It dates it and gives it that 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 thing. You know, and then there's a little bit of a simplicity there. It was I think some people crave that simplicity that, that it was in those movies. There, it's a little a little cheesy and stuff. But yeah, it's like yeah. It's, it's there. You yeah, know, but, for sure. But for we, sure. that's why we love them. Yeah, you know? exactly. That's exactly why we love them. And uh, do you keep a tight schedule? Like, uh, okay, from 10 p.m. to 12 p.m., I'm going to write. I'm going to sit down and write. Do you have that sort of mentality of just, writing, just yes. get it done and I shut the fuck to. up? Yeah. Yeah, with writing, I have to. Not in my life in general. I'm not very regimented. You get up sometimes, you just roll and think, I know I'm going to work out, and then I'm going to kind of play it by ear. you know. But with writing, you almost have to because it's very hard to, for me anyway, to get to this place as, as I'm writing because not everything's inspired. Like, let me tell you, there's everybody in L.A., has said to me at one time or another, I got this great script I want to write. I got this great script I want to write. But yeah. nobody writes them. You know, that's the hard part is the writing. I believe everybody's got a, a story. Excuse me. But that's the tough part. And so I have to teach myself that I, when I write to get it done, I'm not always going to be inspired. At times you wake up and you just get a couple of, you know, you type a few words and you're like, oh, where do I go from here? You know, and you sit there and, just, and I make myself not stare at the page because you can stare at that page and get lost. Mm. So a yeah. lot of times what I do as a writer is once I get stuck, like I don't know what to have them say. I just have them start saying the worst stuff. I just crap, crap, just the worst dialogue I can almost think of, like to make it as bad as I can make it. And then. But just just to keep going and get to the next scene. And then you might get two or three scenes in and you've gone through it. And then you're like, okay, now I'll go back and start tweaking that dialogue and actually make it legible. <laughs> nice. You know? So it's like not get stuck with paralysis by analysis, right? It's like not, not censor yourself. Yeah. But just go. Because sometimes it's easier to go back and check it or, or get the fluff out of it other than actually thinking of, okay, I'm just going to write the first sentence when I get it perfect. Right. It's like, it's never going to be Correct. perfect. So yeah. it's, it's much, it's a, yeah, it's a layered process. And, and what do you do for, what do you do for inspiration? Do you watch a lot of movies? Are you still a great movie buff? Like you watch three movies a day? I watch a lot of movies. I mean, I, I, I actually, the last couple of months, I haven't been as much I've been writing so much that I've been like trying to, but I do, I love movies. And I watch a lot, you know, I watch actually a lot, like you were talking about, a lot of older films over some of the newer. I do watch the newer stuff because I'm, it's always important to keep up with what what's going on and what's happening. And, and there are some really amazing films being made, whether it's Nomadland, which I just saw, which was great. Um, did you like it? Yeah. But I love. Uh, yeah, I did. I liked what I liked about it was I liked he's. The director of that movie, which who I'm not even sure if it is, it might have been a woman director. So, but the, but uh, the director was, of that movie, was, yeah, it was a, I think it was a, an Asian descent uh, woman. Maybe I'm kind of remembering the name, and I'm kind of you know uh, was yeah, thinking, I, but I don't remember the, the name what, yet. But that was I loved their fusion of the actors with the non-actors, and that you could tell. And it took me a little while to catch on which is a testament to them as a, as filmmakers. But I do this with, like, I include my grandmother in my movies all the time. She's not an actress. You know, I put people in all the time that aren't actors. because like, I sometimes like that sort of just raw, untrained, whatever it's, whatever's going to happen. You take a risk, but it's usually worth the risk. And when you watch that film, and also it's a, it says something about the actors themselves, because you have those trained actors like Francis McDormand that are fitting in with these non-actors And, and they're feeling like they're all the same, you know, because it's tough. Sometimes if you do non-actors with actors, sometimes you see a different rhythm and a cadence. It's like all of a sudden, you know, you're like something feels awkward. Yeah. Um, you know, it's kind of like if, a, if an actor just dropped in the middle of a documentary that you were shooting where people are talking, it would feel like an actor just dropped into a documentary. That film really managed to find a balance, which I really appreciated. Good morning. Hi. How are you today? I... I feel fine today. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you were talking about your grandmother, and I obviously remember the scene with uh, Rance Howard and your grandmother. And uh, it's so you're. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing you probably did it. You did you fool her to do the scene? Like, as it is, did she feel that the scene was real life? I'm sorry. I'm sorry for asking it this way, but no. 
No, no, you're asking a pro. It's, you're very perceptive. When I, I no, originally no, no. in that scene, because you don't feel that. Because I'm, I'm actually having doubts asking this. It's just because I watch you on Instagram, and I know that she's in an advanced old age. Obviously, she's like 96, mm -hmm. right, or 97. 99 no. 99 99 yeah so yeah. so mm -hmm. i was thinking so it, it, i i I thought it would probably be very difficult to memorize a dialogue that's why i was like okay maybe maybe you just put him put him doing the dialogue and catch her reactions right because it's a beautiful scene well it Yeah, it was really. Actually, Ron Howard told me it was his favorite scene in the movie, so oh, that was yeah. good. It, uh, it, but but what's funny is it was a last minute ad um, because in the original script, Rance's character, who's who's a, on a road trip and he's trying to pay amends on this trip to certain things that are important to him before he leaves this earth, and he um, one of the things was he was going to go talk to the bank teller that had he had robbed. Mm -hmm. Well, in the script the character that he plays and I play go to this destination he's going to. And it turns out she's passed away and he just wanted to go to the, the tombstone and say something to the tombstone. And I was, and I was sitting there going, why should I do that? I should get my grandmother down here. I was already shooting. I said, I bring my grandmother down and make her still be alive because my grandmother's got so this, you know, where am I kind of thing? I thought it could be great. Cause then the, he goes to, to pay amends to this character and she's got dementia. And it, which will make all it'll all work. And then Rance at that time, who is a the, the most professional human being on the face of the planet, he I'd worked with him about five or six times already. And he because uh, I wrote that part for him. Um, but he's always a by the book guy. He gets his he gets his script. He learns it. He puts it aside. And he knows his dialogue. Well, while we were shooting this, he was sick and we none of us knew it. So his brain wasn't functioning properly. So he was constantly with his script. And I noticed that a lot. And I said, and I would sometimes say, just, just improv, just improv. And he goes, no, no, I got to go know the lines. I got to know the lines. Because he really was like, that. to him, that was an unprofessional thing to not know the lines. I go, I, I wrote it. I don't care. And he's like, he's like, no, no, I got to know your lines. I got to know your lines. They're good. They're good. They're good. So I went, this is going to be good because I'm going to force him to not have any lines. Because I, I came up to him. I said, so Rance, you're going to do this thing with my grandmother. She doesn't, she's not going to have lines, so you can't have lines. And he's like, well, what are we doing exactly? I said, it's going to be great. Trust me, it's going to be great. And I didn't even introduce them. They never even met each other when we started rolling the cameras. I put my grandmother in the chair. I had the camera set up. And I said, I wanted to keep them away so there'd be this, just this, this like freshness to it. And I realized right before the scene, his name in the movie is Carl Robbins. Well, that was her father's name. I named the, his character. So don't say Carl Robbins. I go, say your name's Carl. And I go, and I guarantee you she's going to mention her dad. So we rolled action. I told grandma, I said, Ma, just sit here. Somebody's going to come over and start talking to you, okay? And she's like, okay, wow. <laughs> whatever. Wow. And, and so he walks up, and he goes over to her, and he sits down with her. And he goes, can I take this seat? And she's like, yeah, go ahead, I guess. I think, uh, and he goes, she goes, I think, you even hear the line. She goes, I think it was intended. Sort of like, I think, a, a little bit of her saying, I think we were intended to sit together because I oh, wanted yeah, to yeah, sit together. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. So, yeah, so they start talking, and when he starts to say, you were part of the bank, you know, you worked at a bank, and then you see her going, she's going like this, yeah, and she starts laughing, she's like going, I don't, you know, it's funny, I don't even remember, because she's really trying to think if she worked at a bank, and he's like, when he, so when he does this thing where he says, I robbed you, you know, I robbed you, and she does, She if you watch, when you see the movie, You know, I know you saw it, but I'm saying whoever was watching yeah, this, yeah, yeah. They, the therapy that she puts him through, where she says, let me talk to you for a minute. And she starts to explain to him because she's a very caring person, you know, and she's she could sense that he was troubled. And so she wanted him to feel better. So all that stuff she does, that's just all her being herself. And we caught it. And I, I can tell you that went on forever. I just had to shorten the scene. So it was probably like five, an eight minute scene, but I just kind of shortened it to like three minutes. But um Yeah, that was that's exactly what happened. So when she says that something like uh, I would love to help you feel better about who you are, but all I can remember mm -hmm. is right now. And she does this face. And I'm like, oh, my, I broke up. I, 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 I'm, I'm an easy crier, but usually, you know, but yeah, but, uh, you know, it, it, it really it, it, it struck something in me. Did, did, did you did you break up crying when you saw your grandmother saying that or not so much? Are uh, you are you a crier? I, I've got I. 
I, 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 she, you, oh, terribly, you know, because, <laughs> only because as an actor and, a, hmm. and a, a filmmaker, you know, I allow myself to be as nostalgic, romantic, hmm. sad or as possible. You know, I don't let myself get mad, you know, like some actors are like, I'm going to do whatever I want because I want to be, I wanna, you know, I'm, I'm very professional that way. But I allow those emotions to be there so I don't deflate them. And I can tell you, I was that day I was like. I think I, but she's funny though. You would, if you would, like, I got it on film. I come up and go, Oh, you were the best, grandma. You were the best. She goes, Ah, oh, God damn it. Just stop it, stop it, stop it. And she's just like hitting me, you know. She gets, she sometimes gets really, you know, ornery and it's just, it's very funny. Oh, man. It's great. I it's think, great. I, I think right, yeah, I think right when we were filming, I said, You guys realize with your combined age, you're 183. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the fact that, uh, in in I wouldn't say in all of your movies because I I just saw uh, a couple of them and uh, at least the ones that you directed and uh, for what we would call independent movies I did not feel you know sometimes and in Portugal we have it quite a lot or here in Europe actually which is you go to see an independent movie or a friend of yours has done a movie and it's like okay let me go to that independent movie festival and stuff like that and you know that you're gonna get people who have like one shot for like 10 minutes of a guy walking from one place to the other or someone looking at the <laughs> horizon for 25 minutes and then the ending it's like what the fuck did i just see i mean what happened is he her father is he her mother what the hell i mean something is always happening i mean you're you you have dynamic at least i thought that mm -hmm. that's that's probably what you were going for and you did it quite well because Even in the beginning of Appleseed, like the 10, for, the 10 minutes in the beginning, I, I remember watching it with my girlfriend. I was like, you know, this is what I like about this, is that even though it, it's not one of those movies that rub it in your face, like what happens in the beginning, I'm not going to spoil anything for anybody that might, might watch it later, but um, I mean, a lot of stuff happened in the first 10 minutes or first 15 minutes, whatever, in the beginning of the movie. And I know that if it right. was a if if it were an European independent movie, what happened in those first 15 or 20 minutes would be the whole movie. It's like, oh, come on, I get it. <laughs> get on with the story. So I really like the dynamics, and I'm pretty mm. sure that has a lot to do with you not just being a guy who grew up watching just dramas or just you know the classics, but also liking action and liking uh dynamic you know like um uh some sort of action would not not so much the the, the shooting of guns but <laughs> movement right 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 does it make no, sense you're right and 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 yeah it makes total sense and it's interesting because there is that balance where you know when i'm shooting i sometimes like things to just find their natural pace and not say you know i rarely say action because it puts you in a headspace you know but then What you're talking about later, I have to find sometimes in editing because sometimes I've allowed too much space to just grow naturally out of something. And so sometimes there's a little bit of artificial, okay, honing it down, honing it down. Like the original cut of that movie was probably like two hours and 20 minutes, you know? Not that mm -hmm. I mind a movie is two hours and 20 minutes, but sometimes you go, this movie feels it needs to be shorter, you know? Um, And, and sometimes it's the opposite. I've had, I've made a movie before where the person wanted and said, it's got to be nine. They gave me a, a time. They literally said, it's got to be 98 minutes. And I'm like, after the movie was already What? shot, I'm like, you just have a time in your head. Doesn't that kind of artificial? Don't you want to sit and watch the movie? If you watch the seven samurai, you're not going to go, no, 98 minutes. I don't care. Just make it 98 minutes. You'd be like, well, it's not the movie, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I appreciate that. And it's nice to hear. Um, cause there are times where, you want to be thoughtful and you want to be without being too much. To right? Have, yeah. You don't want to feel like, God, am I just sitting watching some artistic guy think, look, look at what like yeah. you said, look at the back of the head while the sun sets. And I've got some famous uh, fa fa favorite directors that are huge that I love that have done movies like that, where I'm going, God, I love you to death, but why are you just, why are you just mean right now forever? I, I mean, I know it's beautiful and the shot's beautiful and all that, but just make it a painting or something, you know, there's a, a dynamic. And this is why I like directing actually is because you have to, as the director, find all the ways to bring that, make it real, make it organic, but keep the pace going or, or, and when I mean pace going, means it doesn't have to be bam, 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 bam. You know, you watch a movie like Tarantino, whether you love him or not, 
you know, sometimes it has guys sitting there talking forever. And I saw, I saw um, the one uh, death proof. There's a scene yeah. where the, all these girls are at a table and they're talking. The camera goes around. Now, uh, I'm, I'm not, but you know, beneath me to criticize, you know, Tarantino. But I was like, I like that's like that's an example of one of the scenes where his his best talent, which is the talking, I felt like kind of went on and went on and went on and went on. You know, it was almost like, okay, this is, but cause there are other times where he's done it. It's like worked really well. And so I always have to be careful of my own self. And I try to learn from that. I'm like going, you know, I, I have things that feel like I do well, but I have to be careful because I can overdo it or I can underdo it. And anyways, my point was, was as a director, what I like is that, that aspect of using that part of my brain that's not the actor. The actor is like, I got to forget all that stuff. As an actor, I got to go out there and just respond from in here. You know, but as a director, like I, like I go on a set and I'm like, I don't want to manipulate them too much to where their performances are now thinking, Michael wants this, Michael wants that. So I kind of like go, where do you want to go? Where do you feel like going? But secretly in my head, I might have want them to go a certain way. So then I have to sort of manipulate them via going that was great that was excellent just move a little bit to the side or whatever it might be just to try to get what i want out of the scene but without manufacturing their performances so there, there's something about that strategy i really like and in, in finding ways i'm a you know it's it's a very strange job because you know an artist you know whether he's an actor or whether it's a painter or even a writer, they sit by themselves and do so. Where the director's kind of like a very much of an orchestrator, a composer. He's got to pull this together, pull that, and the art department and this and the you know. And so it's I get exhausted. I mean, I'll, I'll do it. I'm like constantly moving, but by the time the movie's over, I usually fall asleep for two days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's a uh, it, it's it's a calorie burner for sure. And uh, yeah, I have to just at least ask you one or two things about sure. God's ears. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, dude, what what was that, man? I saw it was like, holy crap. I mean, it was so credible. You had that, like, it was not you. It was another person. It was like, you really <laughs> were the character. I mean, I looked at your face. I looked at your eyes and it was like, because I had a couple of students, I actually remember having a couple of students in my, in my uh, CrossFit classes, actually, And uh, they had a similar um, type of aut autism that that you portrayed in the movie, uh, with a lot of energy, and with that sort of, you love them the first minute, but it's really difficult for you not to want them to leave you alone after ten, which is the mm -hmm. most human of feeling. It's very difficult for me to say this, but. An autistic mm. person can really drive you bananas because they're so. Sure. They ask you ten times the same thing. Yeah, I remember having guys like, uh, "But how can I grow my pecs?" And it's like, "Oh, you do this and this and this." Yes, but how can I grow my pecs? But how can I grow my pecs? And I was like, "What's wrong with this guy?" Oh, oh, he's got the. Oh, so sorry. And then it's like, it's very difficult. I mean, it must be the hardest of things to to to. It it must be <clears> the <throat> hardest of things to actually have a kid that's got autism and. That sort of deep gaze that they have in their face, but at the same time, kind of a blank gaze. You had that in the movie. I, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I'm being very uh, uh, clear. Yes, you are. But you are. How did you get ready for that? I mean, how did you train for that? Well, I wasn't originally. I actually had asked somebody to direct it first. Mm. I hadn't really directed anything at that point. I directed second unit, and and it was like so. Uh, I'd asked it some, uh, somebody to do, I made that old movie for, it was made for a hundred grand, you know? And I said, I got to shoot it in 12 days. And, uh, I gave the script to this director who I like a lot and trusted. And I said, will you direct? And he read, and he said, I listen, I love it, but I can't, there's no way I can do this in 12 days. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to need 20 days. I'm going to need this and that. So I got it back and I was like, damn it. And I went, I got to do it then. I just have to do it. I know what I want. I know what I, I feel I get, you know, but part of the reason I want somebody to direct it was so I didn't have to think about it and i just I was scared to death that i was going to come across completely fake you know and i said how do i not be fake so it doesn't look like i'm acting autism you know how i mean people, obviously i am but how do i how do i do this and so my girlfriend at the time was a behavioral specialist and so all she did was work with people with autism in fact at the end of the movie you oh, can you can see her working yeah. with a mm. kid now that kid i worked with and would study and hang around with and so An interesting thing was, 
so I got myself and I was like practicing. I said, I start with my body. Like I would like, I would watch him. Like I asked her, like when he would walk, she would say, well, watch him. Cause his feet just never walk, leave the ground. They just kind of slide, you know? And I said, okay, I'm going to start doing this. So I, so I tried to find body things with my body and, and just, you know, like how to, like how to move to, to try and teach me to, to just be that way. And then the other thing was, is like, I thought, well, what about lines? Like I was thinking like if I, so it was like, I was literally trying to learn my lines, but then teach me to myself to forget my lines almost like, so it was like, I was like having to struggle with everything all the time. You know, like I thought maybe if I could just struggle, like if I forget my lines, I'm like, sometimes when you see me doing that in the movie, it's me trying to remember my lines, you wow. know? Okay. Okay. But okay. on the first day of shooting, we were, this is what I don't, what dawned on me is the first day of shooting. We were at a park or at the Lake Merritt in Oakland and I was getting ready to shoot and I had a helmet that I was wearing, a bike helmet. And I picked it up in a, a secondhand store the day before. I said, okay, because I knew I wanted him to have this, the kid that I was telling you about. Mm-hmm. He, when he would go, when she would take him across the street, she would always say, wait, before you cross the street, what do you do? And he goes, I put on my Mr. Safety hat because it makes uh-huh. him think about safety. You know, she yeah. wanted him to remember safety. So I thought, that's a great, I love that. So I wrote it in the story. But I put the helmet on and I was looking in a mirror. It was actually a car reflection because we didn't have any trailers or anything because the budget was so small. So I was looking at a reflection. And I looked over my my camera operator, a guy named Neil Lisk, who's passed away since 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 then. God bless him; he's the best. Um, and I looked at Neil, and I said, "He's British." So I said, "Neil, I go, I can't wear this hat. It looks stupid on me." And he goes, "Michael, if you can't wear that hat, you can't play this part." And I and I went, "You're right. If I'm sitting here thinking this doesn't look good on me, I'm done." I'm done. So I put that hat on, man. I never took it off. I walked around in that hat and I inherited it. So, I mean, I was scared through the whole movie, like, you know, how it was coming across. But I have to tell you that when I went to, this happened several times at the film festival runs afterwards, they would ask me to come and talk. And they said, the director, Michael Worth, and I would come in every single time. Well, not every single time, but a number of times I would go in. I would sit up there and start talking about directing the movie. And I would always get the question. They'd raise their hand. I'd say, yes. And he goes, the, the actor that was playing the character, was he really autistic? And I was going, well, wow. it was actually me. And they would, and like half the people would like not know it was me. So it was oh, like, I man. knew I said, thank God I did, did it, got it right there, you know? So, but, and I also, when I cut my hair, I said, I want to cut it, but I don't want you to do one of those perfect, cool Brad Pitt shaves. I mm. said, cause that's, he wouldn't do that. Just kind of, just, just kind of cut it, you know, just short, but just like, it's just like, boom, you know, it's like a kid. Anyways, yeah. I, there was like a, a lot kid. of things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So even the hairdo. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I appreciate you taking the time to watch that. That is the movie I'm most proud of. And, you know, just for a number of reasons and mm-hmm. the people that were involved, there's several people in it, John Saxon, yeah, I mean, um, Karen Kim and Neil Lisk have all passed away since doing the movie. So oh, it's sort of like yeah. when I watch it, sometimes I'm like, my God, there's, it's like these people are just going. Yeah, man. The best are, are, are leaving. I, I already told my mom when Jackie Chan goes, I'll, I'm going with him. I already got the razor. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> Changing oh, the guard. I know that's, that's going to be a tough day. I mean, just, just Charles Grodin just passed away, man. I and, know. And I'm, and God, like, I love Charles Grodin. And I'm like, that run? he was 86 years old. And I'm like, what? No way. No way. 86 years old. I mean, the guy from Beethoven, the guy from midnight run, he, passed away at 86 i mean he was in twenty thousand leagues under the sea man with kirk douglas I mean, the guy's been around forever but yeah, yeah I, right. I didn't know He's, that uh, i didn't know that i i just saw the 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 ones from the 90s and the 80s and and gene hackman is 92 gene hackman is 92 no, no. i mean it's like wow man it's, it's like time goes by so fast yeah, it's short, crazy man, just I like, mean, you said. like you yeah it's short and thankfully like you mentioned you know you got guys like dolph and and Stallone and Schwarzenegger that luckily they've been taking care of themselves. So they're like still at the, the age they're at and still they've raised the bar. You know what I mean? It's like, I think guys in their seventies back in the fifties were either dead or they weren't, you know, they were sitting in a chair in the corner, like doing some kind of scene, you know, but you know, now you got Stallone still picking people up and tossing them, you know, so it's great. You know? <laughs> yeah. That guy gives me a few more life. years left yeah. in the business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, I can't, I can't wait to watch you do some some sort of action in the future. I can't wait to watch you doing that. But but with you know mindful, yeah, a couple good things coming up. Just, couple good things. Yeah, mindful action and not those you know like uh, Transformers type in which you have an action scene which lasts for two hours and I'm like enough action please <laughs> get some dialogue. Yeah, you gotta in. pace it. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta pace, pace it. it. Yeah, something like I don't know Lethal Weapon 
or or taken please please do i mean you, you you'd be perfect for something like that well what i what i'm actually one of the things I've, I've been working on for a number of years it's actually a limited series and it's all about it's 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 it was it's like <laughs> i want to say it's going to be expendables like but without being that kind of storyline because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's going to be about i'm getting all these different martial artists from different eras to be in it but it's it has to do with uh, a story about all these these B movie actors. It's pretty good. It's it's great. It's actually really nice. cool. And there's a lot of fighting. I'm trying to get Bruce Lai into doing it. I'm trying to get uh, Michael Du. I want to get Michael Dudikoff, Bruce Lai. I mean, I want to get Gary Daniels. I want to get every. I'm trying to get everybody I can. Hopefully from from different eras. So I'm I still haven't finished the the script. It's a big script. It's just a limited. You know, it was like eight eight episodes. So, but it's it's fun. It's kind of dark comedy. It's like Pulp Fiction meets The Expendables. You know. Michael, you've been such a gentleman so far. I know I've taken you for far too long, but I still have a couple of questions. No, it's great. Are, are you, you okay sure, with ask time? Me away. I I, I yeah, wouldn't yeah. want to take yeah. away from your okay. No, man, actually, I'm I'm fine. Oh, thank you so much, buddy. I I, I really wanted to ask you something, uh, or at least a little something about Bruce exploitation. But first, I have a little game that we can play. Okay, All so right. very high production value. <laughs> are you like familiar right. with Rotten Tomatoes? Of course you are. Yes, I am. Okay. So bring in the intro for the new game. No oh boy. Never seen before. Uh. Premiering on the Bruce Willows Martial Arts Theater and directed by Michael Wirth. It's the Rotten Tomatoes of Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> so the great intro right <laughs> not only that not only that but you picked the clips from two of my favorite kung fu movies so thank you that was perfect i know i know i know <laughs> uh so um and and i didn't get the 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 the, the what's the name of the other one the the hot the cool and the vicious and the vicious i didn't get the one for, uh, the, yeah. i did the, the leg that's fighters, a good leg fighters and, was um, fine. Yes, and that was the, the 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 thundery mantis which thundery i love yeah i love that movie so the game is i swear i gave this i gave the trailers to my editor and he arranged everything so i never saw the actual oh. ratings some of these movies okay. do not have ratings from the critics in the rotten tomatoes so right. uh these are seven movies each movie, we're going to see a little, bit of the, uh, a little bit of it, so it's actually 30 seconds, and you and I will have to guess or be as close as possible to the audience rating for that movie. So remember that it's from 1 oh, so to 100. Gonna, okay, so we're going to watch We're gonna watch the clip, Yeah, and then we're going to uh, guess what the ratings are for... for... Exactly, for the audience. But okay. remember this, okay. we have 30 seconds, because after 30 seconds, it explodes, and you get the results. So we got to be fast. Okay, so we can talk okay. to each other okay. while we're doing it. So now remind me, it's like it's a hundred up to one to a hundred, or how's it? Where, it's one to a hundred. It's one to a hundred. So okay, it, right. if a, if okay. it's a great movie, it's got it's gonna have something like ninety eight percent, or some of them actually have a hundred percent. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. So let's begin with the first one, and we gotta be fast. Enter okay. the fat dragon. I would say. Oof. Hmm. Does the audience like this or not? We got 20 seconds. Um, I'm going. I'm going in the high 80s. I think this one. Yeah, I think it's a niche. So I. Yeah, I'll say yeah. 88. Oh, nice. Okay, I'll go 86 just to be a little different. Okay, 88, 86. Okay, let's see. Four, three. Great scene. Two, one. I love. Sleep. Oh man, you guys are the best. <laughs> Oh shit, man! Oh, only fifty-three. Okay, we got to readjust our brain. Somebody's. Oh. We got. We now know our audience. Yeah, but 53. I thought three. Well, but I thought the ones who would score would be the ones who would care, right? I mean, I was going for that. That's what I thought. Yeah. Those okay. Now we know. They We're don't gonna know have to shit think, about movies. Think mainstream. They don't yeah. know shit about movies, man. Okay, so you, you know, Enter the Fat Dragon was such a commentary on Bruce exploitation, and it was so crazy and over the you know. Was, but okay, all right, here we no, go. All right, that's what I want. Again. I want to to entice a little bit of conversation. I want I want to get a little bit of, yeah. of of Bible from you because you know everything about these movies. So please do all the commentary that you have to do after the after each one of the Got scores. It. So do, is this okay. one of your favorite uh, Bruce Bloitation movies? It is one of my favorites because it's unique in Bruce Bloitation in the sense that it, it, it uh, it's a comedy. Not too many of the Bruce Bloitations were comedy. There was a couple that were. 
And Sammo, who loved and worshipped Bruce Lee and just thought he was the greatest, wanted to do a film where he pays homage to his, his, you know, the guy that he loved so much, but also made a comment on the people that were trying to, like, imitate him, you know, mm. so it was great. I thought it was, that was ingenious, yeah. and it's very entertaining, you know, so it's... You know. So you won this one because Mike won, Bruce zero because uh, you were closer. That's right, I was a little closer. You were closer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> By a long yeah, shot, man. yeah. Okay, so second one. Okay. Mm. I love this one. Yeah. Roy Haran drinking milk, <laughs> lion milk. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to say 71. 71. 71. Okay, you're... Uh, you got eight seconds, come on. I'm going to go 63. 63, okay. I said 71. Okay, let's see. Can't wait. Oh, shit, man. Oh, man. Well, at least you won again. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, mean, I'm getting my adjustment to, like, who's watching these. Yeah. Okay. What do you think of this one? Do you like this one? I actually like this one for, on a number of uh, for a number of reasons. It's a it's a it's a interesting film. In Sin Yoon, who who uh, directed it, did Bruce Lee the Man, the Myth. He was told at the time by Golden Harvest that you're, we've got a bunch of this Bruce Lee footage, so we want you to make a movie around it. And the footage was all from Enter the Dragon, and so he started to shoot this, thinking he was going to get all this fight scene stuff and everything. But he didn't realize it was just a couple little quick little outtakes they were going to put in. So the movie's being sold as Game of Death Two, but in reality, if you watch it, it's really Enter the Dragon Two because the character is all based on the guy from Enter the Dragon. Exactly. In yeah, fact, yeah. at the end watch him going into that tunnel and down the elevator they were preparing for him to like have all that stuff when bruce is in the caverns and he's fighting oh, all the guys yeah, they yeah. thought they were gonna get all this footage in there they're going to use so anyways but I, I i like the film and that's the guy that that plays the character was in game of death he was mm. the same actor that was doing all the doubling but kim tai jong yeah. passed away now but mm. yes i like the movie i i think it's got a lot of I mean, a lot of interesting elements it's, to it. it's got one of my favorite fight scenes in the how do you, what do you call it in english greenhouse with uh, oh, uh, the greenhouse, right? The Korean mm -hmm. guy, I think it's Casanova. Wong. Well, Casanova, yeah. Casanova, yeah. We talked to him for our documentary, yeah. Man, you met them all. I'm so jealous. Got Samo, yeah, I know. Oh, good man, yeah. Okay, third one, two zero for Mike. I've been <laughs> <laughs> Jean Claude. Here we go, Kurt. <laughs> Kurt McKinney. There's Petey Cunningham. You got to talk to him. He's great. Yeah, I spoke to Dale Jacoby, but uh, PD, it's, it's, I think it's going to be hard because he doesn't even have a cell phone, I guess. <laughs> oh, I can. I think yeah, I might be able to find him for you. So I'm going to say 65. Yeah, I think we're going to go up on this one. I'm going to go up into the 70s. I'm going to try 72. 72. So 65, 72. Just because Van Damme was in it, probably drew a lot of people in. Oh, oh you got it. 53, so the same as uh, Enter the Fat Dragon. Jesus, man. Okay, so... We're, we're better off always going for 50s or 40s. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nobody likes right, this. I, I mean, we're the last guys on earth to ever like this, I guess. I had no idea That's this true. would be so low. Uh, oh, uh, by the way, um, I, 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 I gave the, 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 the movies or the movie ideas to my editor. He went and got the, the trailers. Uh, but some of them are not Bruce Bluetation. Uh, doing a good job. A couple of no, them are okay. not. No, it's okay. I, don't, I yeah. love all Kung Fu. No, he's doing great. I love it. Yeah, yeah. And no, I'm, he's amazing, that man. That movie is a... It's, that one's a great reflection of like the eighties, the last like Bruce play. In fact, what's really weird is that when I came to LA, um, that was probably, when was that movie made? What year was it? Uh, 85. Did we, did we catch that? 85. 85. Yeah. It was, that was right when I, right when I first came to visit and I was there literally when Kurt McKinney was filming the scene where he's fighting the guys in the parking lot in Venice. He's fighting these guys in a parking lot, saving his dad or whatever it was. I was driving by, I was with my mom and we were, and I was like, Oh, they're doing a movie. Look at that. What did, and I realized later that's what it was. Okay, so uh, fourth. I think it's the fourth one. So it's 2 1, Mike. Mm -hmm. Catching up. Oh, here we go. Okay, okay. This one has got to be high. I'm going to go 82. I don't yeah. care. 82. Good. You're a smart man. Same director as Game of Death 2. Um, Insin Yoon. I will go. Uh, I'm just going to. I'm going to say oh, it's 69. Not... I'm going to say 69. 69. What? It's not Young Wu Ping. I thought it was Young Wu Ping. No, no. 
He did uh, a drunken, drunken master. master yeah. yeah. Eighty-two. Oh, you got it! I can't believe this. We've tied. You I, did. I swear, I go. haven't seen this before. I swear, I swear. Cool. So two, two and two. <laughs> yeah, baby. You're gonna get your butt kicked, man. So oh, no, it's, it's a fifth one. <clears throat> Three to go. Oh, here are the knees. This is one of my favorite movies ever. I think this yeah, is this just is great. freaking amazing. Uh, Shaw Brothers didn't like. I'd say Shaw Brothers will probably score high. I'm gonna 85. <laughs> I'm gonna go 75%. Yeah, oh, Kirata. We talked to him too. Wow, nice. Oh, got it perfect. Almost right on the money. Yeah. Good, good, good. So 3-2. Yeah, like you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like the score so far. Uh, and two to go. <laughs> You're uh, coming to go. from behind. You're coming I'm not from sure behind. If it's, <laughs> All right. I'm not sure if it's two to go or one to go. Uh, it's uh, two, two to go, I think. Two to go. Yeah. I think there's two left. Yeah. <laughs> the clones oh, of Rusu. This is going to be interesting. I actually don't like this movie. <laughs> I got to be honest. Oh, God. It's so it's the worst and the best. It's, or the best it's, movie. Like, it's so it's cringy, cool man. What poster you got down there? What is that thing? That's cool. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go 41. <laughs> I'm going to go 50, 52. Just, oh, nice. Know. You're going to get a little, it was random. little action. Yeah, that's good. I appreciate that. Is it so bad that it's good or do people actually hate it? Let's see. Wow. Oh, close. Uh, yeah. That makes sense. Okay, so they're going for, okay, got it. Got it. All right. Yeah. Okay, so you okay, already tie, won. You could, you could tie me. Yeah. You, you could tie me now. No, no, it's 4 2. It's 4 2. You won. But uh, four, let's, let's check out the last one just, just for kicks. Mm -hmm. My brain. Wow. Ah. <laughs> I love this one. I love Bruce Lai. Ho Chung Tao. Yeah. Mm. I got the original poster to this signed by three of them. <laughs> I'm gonna nice. go 77, just because I know yeah, a lot of people might. That was a good one. Yeah, 77. Yeah, I will say. Um, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna be close. I'm gonna go just to tear up 79. 79. 79. Let's see. Oh shit! Oh my god! No, no. We're just we don't know our audience at all. That was it. No, come on. That's the same as Clones of Bruce Lee. I come mean, on. Who knows? People are bipolar. But you know, mm. it's probably it's probably people who watched it and were like, "Oh, this guy is imitating Bruce Lee." So you, right, you know, so they got mad. People yeah. get mad. You know, if you say that yeah, Bruce Lee sure. would probably not win a fight against someone, they're gonna go like, "No, he's God. He will." beat the hell out of everybody in All the right, world. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, okay. Uh, there, is, there is something to dying early in life, you know, to making sure that you get solidified in a certain, yeah. whether you're James Dean or whoever, you know. Yeah. Um, was it but, really uh, Bruce right. Lai? Was fun. it really O Chung Tao doing that that acrobatic stuff? Was he... Uh, no. Oh. Now, I don't even know who that actually was, but it wasn't... Um, he can do some pretty good... Ac not quite that good. No. Uh, um, I should have asked who that was, but um, uh, no, he, he can do he can do a, a front flip and back flips and you know, but like one, you know, mm -hmm. at that time. Uh, he's, he's in Taiwan right now. Taiwan, yeah. Yeah, nice. Do you speak uh, Chinese at all? Yeah. No, very little when I was there. You know, it's, the, you know what the problem is. I tried, but what I realized, like with Chinese, and it's probably true of most languages, but specifically with that, you could say the word. But if you don't hit the inflection right, people almost don't even know what you're saying. It's not yeah. like you can say, I could say in English, you can say rock, 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 and everybody gets it. But in Chinese, if you don't hit it the right way, so I just, I gave up. I mean, I, I'm sure it would be something I would love to take the time to learn, but. Um, yeah, I've no, been learning, I've been learning Mandarin for two and a half years and it's starting to. Oh, nice. I'm starting to get the basics, but if somebody speaks real fast to me, I'm like, I'm going to go like, uh, I'm sorry. And right. I always Good resort you, to ni hao, ni hao, du bu chi, du bu chi, like, sorry. That's right. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it's the tones. They have four tones and in Cantonese they have six or seven. I think it's actually seven tones. I know so it's, it's all like, variant. Yeah. Yeah. It's very uh, counterintuitive, but it's actually, 
I find mm. that it's one of the best fitness for the mind because it really you can't connect it to anything because if if I in Portugal learn or or if if if, if an English person or an English speaking person learns uh, German, there's a lot of words yeah. that are similar, right? But if you learn If you're a Portuguese speaker or English speaker and you learn Chinese, there's no relationship whatsoever. So it's really all about memorizing new patterns. So it's a great, great uh, workout for the mind. Yeah. I find it uh, very interesting. So, yeah, I mean, I guess in, in 10 years, I'll be average, <laughs> average fluency. <laughs> um, Michael, I, I took way too long of you. Uh, so I, I would just like to listen. I lagged, I got in late, so it was, it was perfect. You did the perfect amount and I, I really, it's great to get a chance to meet you. And I, I appreciate you taking the time to watch some of these, these, uh, projects I've done in my life. And, and, uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, I love it. I mean, it's, I always say to people in this business, I say, you know, if you can't live without it, um, then don't, you, you can't, you know, if you can live without it, then do, because mm -hmm. you're in it for the wrong reason. You know, it's like, um, it's tenacity. I mean, listen, we've all had paths we could have taken that, you know, you can theorize would have made it better or worse, but we all have our path that, that's ours. And, you know, we go at different rates and different speeds. And, you know, I'm just here to just keep trying to do, things i don't care about the size of the budgets i just like a, you know as long as i'm paying my my bills and getting some food in my mouth you know i'm gonna i'm gonna be happy I, plus i invest in the stock market so it's like i'll make my money that way <laughs> um so you know i can sometimes go off and do a movie for nothing and be like okay oh please but, but just um, don't tell me you're a cryptocurrency maniac Oh, All my no, friends no, are into that shit. Oh man! I put fifty dollars in Bitcoin. I left it. That was it. I just said I'll do it once, just because if it shoots up to the moon, I said, "Hey, I made five hundred bucks or whatever." I just <laughs> so that was it. I believe me. I'm I'm more into like companies I like. You know, I, I watch a company and I I enjoy their their processing and, and believe in them. So that's all I do. I'm I just just in the long run, you know. Um, but I was going to say that just in terms of, you know, I I. You know, I love this business, you know, and I love the writing. I love the directing. I'm, I've been lately jonesing for the acting to get back out and energetic and kinetic. So, but also as you were bringing up and while we just watched all that stuff, you know, I've been really, really enjoying going into when I do Hong Kong and Taiwan and Korea to shoot this documentary uh, three and a half years ago that we're just finishing now. I realized that these films that we all love and we grew up on are like disappearing. You know, you go on YouTube, like you pulled up all these, your, your editor pulled up all these from you, YouTube, your drought, yeah. which was, I don't get the right term for them, you know, and they're all these cropped, like beaten up yeah. versions of the film, but they exist in these beautiful scopes sometimes and um, widescreen, you know, versions that if we, you know, I went to all the inst the film institutes and they were, they were, um, They didn't have them. They didn't exist. And the only people that tend to have them now are these collectors that have stuck them in their garage and they don't want people, you know, so it's like, it's been like Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom trying to find these prints. But I realized if I can just find a few dozen and get them, you know, get them um, out to people like everybody and, and yeah. have them look good and, and have them be, you know, the way it was intended. I grew up watching them on the big screen. You know, I can't maybe mimic that for everybody, but at least the way it looked. So anyway, my, my rambling a little bit, but I just want to say that I'm get it going and finding these films and meeting the people that made them and learning more about them has been like a new, new thing for me, a new desire, a new, you know, It's great. You know, I see a lot of people like Christopher Nolan and these guys that will restore 2001 and they'll, they'll the Citizen Kane or whatever. But I'm like, man, I'm doing the leg fighters and you know, Bruce Lee, <laughs> the man of myth. You know, I'm going to get those back. You know, so it's been great. You know, it's a way of giving back. And uh, it's really inspiring to see you um, putting such good work on so many different facets because, you know, Uh, there is nothing worse than seeing wasted talent. And uh, obviously you've shown me at least that, uh, and a lot of other people obviously, but if you can in a way touch a guy in Portugal whom you've never met, I mean, you, you must be doing something right, I mm -hmm. guess. So I just wanted to let you know that, uh, you know, you well, you've touched me, my friend. You've now touched me. <laughs> oh, thank For you. Thank sure, you, brother. For sure, my man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. And, uh, well, get some rest because I know you had a long day. Zen Outlaw. Zen Outlaw. Why that name, by the way? Uh, it's, it's, it, it's funny when I was 
it was my very first email address when I first got a computer and I had Zen outlaw because I, w- I had a ranch at the time and I was always riding horses and, you know, I owned these horses. So I was trying to come up with a funny name and, you know, cause I was doing martial arts at the time. So I was like, Zen outlaw. I like it. So there you yeah, go. Yeah. Okay. It's like a little bit of it's both. Stuck. However, and I'm going away. I'm, I'm going away right after this. I still prefer vanilla. See you. Thanks everybody. <laughs> 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 okay, Michael. Thank you so much once again. All right, buddy. And uh, we'll Thank talk you, to each friend. other soon. Thank you. You got it, Brian. We will. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, buddy.